Hi, everyone. We have some information. I just want to speak for a bit on these. He never I want you to do it. Right. I want you to do it. Go We've on. got some live shows coming up today. They'll be... <laughs> You're really trying. I'm really trying. He always... He, he does all the information and I sit here going, yeah. Sunday the 15th of August in Liverpool is the live Patreon thank you show. There are some spare tickets available One. and you can get them at adamrow.co. Dot uk forward slash shows that's on the screen right now it's in the description and on that website you can also get tickets for the live show we're doing in london, london. at the underbelly festival underbelly. and my three-night run at the edinburgh, edinburgh fringe next week it's next week yes adamrow.co.uk slash shows and that's on the internet on the internet that's a website on the internet yes so go on your computer or phone yes do that there might not even be any tickets left by the time you see this, so fucking hurry up. Fucking not. Go ahead. Hurry up. Go ahead. Get on me, kid. <laughs> All right, lads. Before we start this week's episode, I'm here to tell you about our latest sponsor, Coin Corner. Dot com. Now, they are one of the longest running exchanges for cryptocurrency in Europe, and they're one of the best ways to buy and sell Bitcoin here in the UK. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, it's the number one cryptocurrency on the planet. It's been around for over a decade, and it's going mainstream. It's in the news every day. Celebrities like Tom Brady are tweeting about it. El Salvador's made it legal tender. If you want to get involved in the cryptocurrency game, the best way, in our opinion... To do that is to go to coincorner.com slash wordpod. You go there, they know we've sent you. You're getting in the cryptocurrency game. They know we've sent you. Everyone's winning. You're helping our sponsors. They're helping us. That's how the pod game works, okay? That's what we want you to do. Now, we've got to say this. When you invest in cryptocurrency, it's like stocks and shares. Your capital is at risk. Don't invest anything you can't afford to lose. Be safe. Don't be a fucking dickhead. Now, let's get back to the pod. What's happening guys, just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash pod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a shit boozer, you get an extra episode every single week, exclusive. No one else gets to see it apart from the Patreons. And you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well. That's what you get. And on top of all of that, you get access to the entire back catalogue of the Patreon episodes. We've been doing that for like a year now. There's Loads of content there. There's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk. They only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shit loads of content for us and you can only get it at patreon.com slash pod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. Everyone ready? Yeah. No, honestly, be ready. Because when I go, I go. Have you started? I've gone. Oh, okay. I did not know you can't. Yeah. Cool. Welcome. <laughs> Are you all right? You? Yeah. I don't know. I'm in a really good mood. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's going to be a long day today. Up at 10 to 6, teething fucking toddler. Not toddler, baby. And then we've got this all day. We're proper full public. Yeah. And then we've got a gig together, and then I'm going to close the frog. And I've had <laughs> half a Daffy Doodah, half a Daffodil. Just see a little performance enhancing drugs, because... I don't turn up to these not ready to play like a Russian athlete at the Olympics. Well, I've had two paracetamol and three poos this morning. Oh, my God. Same. That's how you prep, isn't it? Same as a yeah. That's how you prep. Yeah. Like a fucking greyhound at the dog track. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking good in lane two. Just shits himself. Three full this poos. Fuck- what? Three, like, yeah. poos. No. Or- From no. I have had like, start poos. to finish and, and a, a poo. Drink yeah. some water right now. No, because I'm worried. I don't want to see you dehydrate. Mm. Like a fucking... It's not being ideal. Yesterday, we went for a little walk around town. No, is it? Three poos isn't ideal, is it? No. No. Before before the AM. Or in, in, <laughs> in the, the AM. Before the AM. Before me bloody Cocoa Pops. Oh, wrong, um, wrong cereal to choose, guys. Apologies. Yeah, I've just... I've felt a bit like fucking a big bag of shite for the past sort of day. We went for a little walk around town yesterday when my car was getting its MOT done. And it just wiped me out. 
And then I felt sick last night, couldn't eat. Threw up on the street like a fucking smackhead. It's just being shit. I felt worse last night than I felt at any point when I actually had COVID. And I woke up today and I'm just tired. Yes, yeah, from all that asked. shit in, Adam. Yeah. I woke up in the night four times for a poo as well. So since midnight, I've had, had seven, seven shits. That's not normal, is it? No. Finn, can you pull up COVID body? I don't know if that's what they're calling it. I haven't it. had seven poos this week. <laughs> That's mad. You've had seven poos in the last 11 hours. Yeah. Are you not that regular? Have a, have a poo a day, You're probably. You're such good best, best friends that he takes some of your poos for you. Yeah. That's nice, isn't it? We're also wearing the same fucking outfit. I today. knew you had to mention it, Carl. It's on your, it was on your mind. We haven't been sponsored by Lost Art. We just both if bought If we could be, yesterday. then it's my favourite brand, please. Shout out Lost Art. Shout out any clothes company that don't make shite, that want to send us some stuff. I'm a large, these titties getting bigger, maybe Excel. I don't know, that's up to you. Shout out to Kim Shepard who sent us some crisps. Absolutely. Apropos of fucking nothing. Apropos. Apropos of nothing. Apropos. It's just a turn of phrase. Apropos. Just try not to shit yourself. What for is a diarrhea time like in COVID nineteen? We've got actual oh, fucking come on. stats. Mama like that. Mama like. That. Get that sexy talk going. I'll tell you. Come on. There you go. Right. Oh, because I can't just hear about the poo stats. No, you have to I need read to read these, them. So. Thank you. What is diarrhea like in COVID-19? Well, in one part of West Derby, it's fucking biblical. It says tummy. What website's this? Oh, it's <laughs> COVID Joy Zone. Joint tummy. Zone. I'm not reading anything. I'm believing it. it says tummy. Tum Tums. This is the internet for five-year-olds. Tum Tums get very sore sometimes, and then you do an owie poo. It can, we can, it can, you can't do COVID poos? COVID-19 can be transmitted through poo. What? Yeah. How? I mean, you're not in contact with anyone else's poo. So let's say I, I make a, honestly. Let's say I shit on the floor and you come in and rub it all over your face. Yeah. You could catch it. But I've stopped doing that, I know, you know. Because <laughs> I think, I just think you turn 35 and you've got to make some changes in your life. The and shit that's one on of the, the floor. You'd like, win that. Is that shit? Let me just check with my face. <laughs> no. How do you do that? Unless you're into, this is too rough too early, in it? But. Unless an early sign of COVID, which means Adam's had COVID since he was four years of age. <laughs> it's an early sign if you were, you're ground zero. You're at COVID-19. Your, <laughs> your arsehole is ground zero. Yeah. I think we've known it for a long time. Fucking Chinese scientists are going to be like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> that right? <laughs> I'm a Chinese scientist, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, I've just felt a bit rough. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a West Yorkshire Asian Chinese scientist, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're strong, these. Oh, dropped uh, all my washing off today at a washing and ironing service. Okay. Yeah. Can't be arsed anymore. Right. Trying to keep on top of washing and ironing and, and folding and stuff. When I do the recycling, uh, every third time I do the recycling, I think of you going, I just, these bins fill up after three days. <laughs> I, it, <laughs> mentally, that fits in, I think, with how the watchers, the fans, the listeners, sort of deep, like, that makes sense, that you've gone big fucking bin liner. Four bin bags of uh, dirty washing I had all under the stairs, so I just, yeah, I dropped them all off. The woman nearly had a fucking stroke when I walked in. I walked in and went, like, I've got some washing for you. She went, yeah, how much? I was like, like, four bin bags full. It's actually three bin bags, and you know, like, a big Primark bag? Like, yeah. the big white ones with four handles. yeah. Yeah, so one of them full of clothes, and I went, yeah, there's four of them. She went, oh, we're not going to have these done till Monday or Tuesday next week. Oh, my God. She's like, and do you want to collect them, or do you want us to drop them off? It's a £2 <laughs> delivery fee. And I was like, you can drop them off. Literally, that, that what do they call it, laundrettes are looking at you the same way your Chinese takeaway look at you like, <laughs> Mike, he's in again. The <laughs> fucking pension scheme's back. Do you pay by the kilo or oh. something? Yeah, I think you pay... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good undies them <laughs> yeah they're strong pure uncut Adam Rowe undies I wouldn't be rubbing that anywhere near you think I've got Covid now <laughs> <laughs> and that was from before quick call back but I'm, I'm capable of that <laughs> check your phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> roll reverse I got bitches all <laughs> in so yeah I've dropped all my clothes off and until Monday I've got like four t-shirts Right. Mm. And anything else? Just What day is it? Well, that's an issue, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm going to have to wash. I'm going to have to do me washing because someone else is doing me washing. You're having way too many plops and you've got way too many T-shirts. No, not enough T-shirts. How much underwear did you leave yourself? Uh, I've got loads of undies. You double up on that like have a holiday, don't you? I've got loads of undies and socks. I just Now, is that a policy? Yeah. All oh, right. I just constantly buy it. Yeah. 
Same. Like every time I go to town, well, not every time, but most times most. I go to town, I'll just get like <laughs> a load of new undies and socks. So there's always plenty. Same. Right. Do you take like 16 <laughs> I pairs? I never do that. And what? it makes total sense. If I go, I need to buy some more socks and make a mental note. And then when I'm in a shop or, you know, I've, I don't, I've, I don't, every time I go, well, what have we gone out for today? Bread. Uh, we need some lettuce, tomato, undies, obviously just throw them in. <laughs> like I've never done that. I, I've got so many socks and undies that like, if I had them all clean, I would not have to clean them for like three months. I've got like 90 pairs of undies and 90 pairs of socks. Same. Would you, if you, if you collected all of that over the course of three months, yeah, or fucking less if you've had, you know, COVID ass. If you plop that bin liner down at the laundrette, would you be like, I'll be honest, love, I'm going to tip you a little bit extra. I'd, this is time and a half. No. You can't give a you can't give a bin liner of three months of undies and knickers right. over and be like, same price. If anything, that's got to be danger money. Undies is easier because they don't have to iron that. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so fuck them. Right. Yeah, Pay them less. Fuck you. I think you'll know you've changed when you're like, Kirsty, you lazy bitch! These aren't even iron, these kecks! But I don't think I'm ever going to wash or iron any of my own clothes again. Now that I know that this thing exists, and you can just be like, deal with that, twat. Um, <laughs> Man that's, of what people. that's what it's I called. Don't know. That's what it's called. <laughs> oh, it's called twats. twats the shop's laundry. called deal, we deal with that, you twat. Oh, right. Mm. Deal with that. Drop it off at my house. Here's your two quid. Shove it up <laughs> your ass. Put it in an apple. Fuck off. That's, that's not bobbing for apples that you just described there. <laughs> Stick it in a fucking two pound, shove the apple up your ass. <laughs> Happy Halloween, you pave. <laughs> and now last you've got COVID. Of, last day of October. Yeah. Um, Dan, do you take loads of bills away when you go on Aldi for like two days, but you take like 50 pairs? Do you do that? Bills? Underwear. You're not calling oh. on these bills? No. And I'm a, now you said it, I'm like, I think I'm aware of that. Do you call it bills? What do you call it? Under kecks. Kex, what about Kex? Kex are your pants. What? Kex is like jeans, aren't they? Your jeans oh are your kecks. Oh, God, we've lived different lives, those guys. But if you go away for like two days, you take like five pairs. I overpack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In always. Case you shit yourself every day. I take, I take two pairs of undies for every day and two spares. So I can change my undies twice a day and then I can poo myself twice across the holiday. So how many do you take on a two week holiday? Yeah. I think when you're asking this question, though, 30. I don't think. It's a suitcase full of I undies. I would take 30 pairs yeah. of undies. Yeah, he takes Kirsty with him. Come on, Kirsty! <laughs> There's your two quid. Get it on your back like a fucking mule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think when you're asking about the how many underpants shouldn't be asking bills. Him. Yeah, he's one of them. He's he's gonna fuck the stats. He's the anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> he is, and that is a nice way of saying he's a it's uh, two x plus two. That's me formula. A liberal plopper. <laughs> That's me undie formula. I I honestly, travel. if I'm going away for a weekend gigging, you the way I pack for a week on on holiday. There's n n next to no difference. Yeah. I just like, if I'm away for three nights, I'm like, throw some underpants, throw some socks. Well, you need them for the day bag, when you're going out with the other comics, jeans, having lunch shoes. or walking around, and you, get, you need a new pair for when you go to the gig. Yeah. It's cut two or three. See, if I'm driving to a gig, why am I, when people are like, God, you've got a lot of, like, you look a dick when you get into like the, the hotel or whatever. Say you're doing the Birmingham Glee. You look a bit of a bella when she's like, you're here for three nights and you've like got fucking... I take coat hangers, yes, I've yeah. just got shirts, T-shirts, and then I just put them on the, the little hook. At the back? Yeah. yeah. I throw some shoots. So you look a bit of a dick, but... But you're driving shorts. On I a drive train, naked of a you've got to get it. You've got to get it down. If you're going through London on the train, I try and get it into one bag. Yeah. Yeah, I always try and get it into one bag or suitcase. You don't want to have three bags to fight off terrorists. Like, fuck off. You know, I think about that. Yeah. They're getting away, though. What? Like, getting away. Yeah. You're one bag. Like, what? 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 And he's like... Would you stop a terrorist if you saw one? No. What do you know? I don't think I'd even grass him in, just in case I got fucking, you know? You're on the list. I don't, I'm so worried about being perceived as racist that I don't think I'd even dob a terrorist in. It could literally be the full garb, like literally visually the most hack terrorist ever, like dynamite button. I'd be like, I don't want to be the gammon that fucking points what if him he, out What if he disease. was white? What? What if he was white? A white terrorist? A white terrorist. Fuck off. Yeah. What really? Who? White terrorist with a what Coventry accent? Oh, Coventry. Right. Why would someone in the Midlands be a terrorist for London? What? Why? Because he's pissed off he's with the socio-economic disproportionate distribution of wealth. <laughs> nearly, nearly nailed it. 
I did really. You didn't. Disproportionate distribution of wealth. Disproportionate yeah. distribution of wealth. What's wrong with that? That does make sense. Yeah. Right. Fuck the lorries. I, I nailed it. You tripped over on it. It was good. I'm just giving you. I'm going to only give you an eight point five for that. Imagine that he's right? got an old Coventry shirt on. An old Cov. Like Mustafa he's still Hadji. pissed off that Mustafa Hadji retired. Yeah, that the Rico Arena is owned by a fucking I'd, rugby I'd, team. I, I like to think that I'd be like, you know, like Jordan nine eleven. There was that plane that they reckon was headed for the White House. Yeah, and they overtook it and they crashed it into a field. Mm. What are you looking at? I'm, I literally cannot wait for what you're about to say. I'm excited. <laughs> so you're, you're <laughs> on that sir, plane. You have. My full attention. What do you think you'd have been like on that plane? I reckon I'd have run in them. Mm. Him? There's about five of them, wasn't there? Yeah, well, I'd have, like, had a word with the people around me and being like, hey, we can fucking take this plane back and just crash it. That's what they did? Yeah. I reckon I'd have been the leader of that. Oh. Uh-huh. Why are you looking at me like that? I reckon thing? you'd have gone in the cockpit and landed it and flown <laughs> it back to the airport. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it can't be that hard. Uh, it God. cannot be that hard. Especially if you've got the guy on the phone going... I say, is how you do it. He knows where all the buttons are. Yeah. yeah. It can't be that hard to just fly the plane to the nearest like field or airport and just land it. So, what, so what happened? The, the, so, right, so one so, went into the Pentagon, two went into the towers. Yeah. But one... Allegedly. Like, <laughs> shut up, you <laughs> fucking nana. Hemophilia. <laughs> can't go be a nana mm. with a yellow top on. Re- oh my God, that's the colour of nanas. <laughs> hey, he's this fucking. is orange anyway. Is it? Yeah. Oh, right. Let's keep it on the fucking rails, guys. Right. So here's what happened. Right. Two of them into life. the towers. Bang, bang. <laughs> right. Pentagon. What? And then also there was a, a building a couple of fucking blocks down that fell for no reason, apparently, as well. Fucking George Bush did 9 11. Uh, then one went into the Pentagon, but that looked more like a missile hole. That was a bit suspicious. But the other plane. They I've done a lot of reading about this. Oh, no, that's right. Watch YouTube twice. Go on. The, um, the other plane, they reckon it was headed for the White House. They reckon. But uh, basically, the terrorists were like, sit down, we're going to crash it into the White House. Because they were Chechen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are very confused terrorists. And then... This is a the Russian plane, plane, right? People on the plane were like, hey, should we fucking smash their head in? And they said it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lat. It was like 20 this, scouts. Lat, Das, Sti, this is our fucking stack, Whoa, dude. Oh, no Das is in Liverpool. There are definitely Daz, Daz is in Liverpool. No. no. Can I just quickly, before we completely fuck the bit... Can you just replace her name? Ste and Mach. 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 Ste and Mach. Ste. Where are they going on the stack, dude? It seems a bit random, Washington, doesn't it? DC. Washington, DC. <laughs> fucking love a DC fucking. Yes, mate. What happens love in getting DC smashed up in, in the DC. bars in Washington, DC with lobbyists and fucking. <laughs> Fucking interns at the at Capitol Hill, lads on top. <laughs> fucking amazing. But yeah, basically the terrorists were like, sit down, we're going to crash it. We're crashing it into the White House. You're going to be part of history. And then they went, no, hey, fuck off. Was that Stay or Mark or the other one? John. 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 <laughs> John, who also did the fire exits at the start. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Delta Airlines. Don't worry about this, love. <laughs> fucking there, there. <laughs> Fucking ran out the back, lad. Yeah, so they punched the set of sets in. They battered them. And then one of them was like, just have to crash this into a field because I don't really know how to do planes. So he just... Wee. Right. And you think, <laughs> if it had been you on the stag do, with <laughs> Steve, Mark and John... And Adam. You'd have gone, lads, I fucking nailed this, mate. Well, Adam, me Adam, I, I like to think I would have remembered what airline we were flying with. Or maybe just looked at the badge on someone and then rang the customer service thing and said, can you put me on the pilot trainers because I've got the plane and I need to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Delta <laughs> Airlines. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. We just put you... It's option five next time you ring up for the <laughs> flight trainers, <laughs> the pilot trainers. They were just waiting around in an office to take emergency calls to let knobheads <laughs> fucking land planes. There you go. There must be a hotline. Hey, Wait, Brian, Delta Airlines emergency knobhead fucking landings. <laughs> How are you, sir? There must be. If you Hi, actually... lad, it's Steve. I've got a fucking bastard on me hands in it. <laughs> there must be a procedure in place now. Is where they're like, fucking hell. Get the blow three fucking stuff. Jack Daniels here. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to have a fucking cunt. Pl- <laughs> There gone. must be a procedure where if you accidentally commandeer a plane, you get like accidentally. coached. <laughs> oh shit! There must be. You can't just leave you to fly it on your own. Just for everyone who hasn't seen the film Airplane, please go out. Of your, it's old as fuck. The Stupid film is older fuck. than me, 
And it is about this. Yeah. This is what, and I literally can't talk about this anymore without going, that film is so gag, 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 gag. It's funny as fuck. It's got some of the stupidest jokes ever. Leslie Nielsen's amazing in it. Um, and it's about this and they talk him down. It's funny as fuck. Well, I reckon, like, I, I, do, I, I do think, yeah, I'd have charged that. If I was on, like, the tube and someone was like, terrorism, hey, bang! I, I reckon I'd run at them and, like, try and tackle them and that. Just to stop you there, Adam, do you think terrorists shout <coughs> terrorism, <coughs> yeah, bang? Well, they don't think it's terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> they don't think it's terrorism. Terrorism, they don't yeah! Think, they don't think it's terrorism. Do they, do they say the bang or do they go bang? <laughs> they go bang. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> yeah. That'd be disappointing if you were a terrorist, if you're fucking hooked up to the dynamite and you go, bang! Oh. <laughs> bang! Uh, this is not good. This is not but good. They don't button. think it's terrorism that they're doing, do they? They think they're doing like God's work. So they, they wouldn't shout terrorism. What would they shout? The Russian. Remember <laughs> remember the accent? Yeah. God's yeah. work. <laughs> Kaboom. That's essentially. This is for Putin. Kaboom. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Up the Jesus. The Jesus. Up the Moses. Let's end it there. You want to do Buddha? <laughs> Hang on, you think people are blowing Vishnu. planes up in the name of Moses? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Up the Moses. Hard line, really hard line. <laughs> Jewish terrorists. Oi! Oh, God, sorry. Sorry. Isn't it Christian? What? There's never been Jewish terrorists, has there? No. They're quite a quiet people. I don't know, I think there's some people in Palestine might argue that point. Oh, yeah, that's true. We're in fucking choppy waters here, guys. Okay. I always forget that that stuff's going on over there, you know. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. (laughs) Like, I always always forget (laughs) that, like, they're having a problem. And I've been for a while. A while. Could you tell me what happens? Or you just know the guys are stripping? So here's what I think. It is my limited uh, knowledge. Could you do the whole history of of that? Could you? Because you know, could you do the history of the area and talk us through it? So, Adam Rose guide to the Middle East. So basically, the Muzzies and the Jews, <laughs> yeah, both think right. that that's their gaff, right? But like, they both like don't think the other people have got any right to it. So, right. You, like a long time ago, it was mainly Muzzy. How long? Oh, I don't. I don't really know. Ten, twenty years. But it was ago. mainly muzzy, could and then a, over you... a period of time, the Jews have sort of like, yeah, like gradually just like the the Jews have got like a fence around their bit, and they're just like every every couple of days they move it like five or six yards. <laughs> Mo- like, and the muzzies come out going, lad, lad, where's my garden? It's fucking yeah. sunk again. Yeah, they're like, hang on, that was my tree. You've put the fence around the tree now. Yeah, you fucking robbed me tree. You fat mopper. Yeah. And that fat Muppet, that's the start of the aggression, isn't it? But yeah. then, like, the, the 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 Israel, the Jews, they've got, like, they're a very developed nation with, like, <laughs> an army and <in> that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so alive. And it's not just the so Daffy Doodah, it's the fact we are talking so they, Palestine uh, and Israel <laughs> so badly. So, yeah, so the Jews, the Israelis, <laughs> the Jews, the Israelites, the Judos, <laughs> the Judo enthusiasts, the Jewish, the Jewish, right, just turned up in no. a garden and went, this is our garden. What? <laughs> when was that? Did that just, the first, did they just, but the, the Jews have got like, they tunnel, big, like mili- big military power as well, whereas Palestine haven't. I think we've got so the a lot moles. of people, a lot of people think it's not a fair fight. Because the Jews have got like planes and that, and do, do, do. the Palestinians have got saying, like rocks. You've got to stop saying Jews. <laughs> just say Israelis. Just say Israel. it's it's way less harsh. Planes right. versus rocks, yeah. <laughs> it's essentially that. Like the Israelis have got like fighter jets, yeah. and the Palestinians are just like throwing sticks and that at it because they haven't got an army. <laughs> sticks and stones may break my bones, but I've got a fucking weapon. Papa, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's essentially it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think like, but the Ju- the Israelis, yeah. the Israelis, they they lay claim because they have, have historically been in the Middle East, but haven't been for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. And then after the atrocities of the Second World War, <laughs> Zionism started, and they basically, with American backing, in like 1947 or 1948, basically got like 
fucking helicoptered in. And the Americans were like, yeah, you can live here. This is yours now. And there's a lot of like Palestinians like, I'm sorry, what? That's my house. <laughs> like, nah, that's Israel now. Could you just fuck off over there? So it's, it's not even like ancient history. This is only 70 years old. And since the 60s, but hang on, we're, we're, the, we're the Israelis slash Jews or whatever. Were they there years ago? And Hundreds, hundreds of years ago. But did they think that that was still theirs? We were there hundreds of years ago. Yeah. With Crusades. Like it's a holy but land when they for got everyone, off, isn't it? When they left, were they like... <laughs> when, when they were hounded out. Yeah, they, that's the point, isn't it? Well, what do you mean hounded out? They were out. They've just been a... You, the other thing you got bottom. <laughs> yeah. The oh. whole of the... The Hebrews, yep. that's what they called then. They loved Hugo Boss. I don't think they did. I think yeah. historically, the actually, Hugo Boss like made bouncers. Nazi uniforms, and they quite famously don't like Jewish people. <sighs> <laughs> so, sympathies with everyone, is what we're trying to say. <laughs> Who do you support? Oh, I'm a big... Um... <laughs> I think I've got COVID throat. Who do you support, though? Because, like, everyone seems... You love picking a team, don't you? The Toronto Raptors, <laughs> the LA Rams, the PLO. It's classic, Adam. <laughs> I'm not really into uh, this guy's a shite. Uh, you know, don't know a lot about it, but I'm freaking Israeli. You know what I mean? Like a bit of... No, but, like, most people seem to think that the Palestinians are right, don't they? Like, over here. Like, everyone I speak to seems to think that... Pro-Palestine. Pro-Palestine. Uh, rather than pro-Israeli yeah I don't think it's difficult in it like if we're like if you're really talking about it it's difficult but it is basically like a long fucking FA Cup fixture between I Keep nearly like said Tottenham and I decided <laughs> to pick someone else so between like Chelsea Topspur? and fucking no, like Yeovil Town like it's that that's why it's that's why people like, it's not that they're the underdogs. They're getting the shit kicked out of them. It's pretty inhumane treatment. The way they're fucking, like, it's a very difficult thing to talk about. And uh, it is, though, there's like loads of undiscovered islands, like in Fiji and stuff. So why don't they just put some of them there? <laughs> <laughs> Who? The Israelis? Oh, for them. Listen, Zionism was fine, but you've caused a lot of shit around here. So why don't we pack up all your stuff? Let's get Tel Aviv. Let's get Jerusalem. And move it to Samoa. <laughs> Why not? Is is the Gaza Strip like Vegas Strip? <laughs> yeah, just the same. Just in my head, it's like hotels and casinos. Actually, no, they're not allowed to gamble. Like Zanti Strip and that. Is it the same? Yeah. Should we do a lads tour there? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to do a fucking stag do in Washington. They go really badly wrong. But the Gaza Strip. It sounds good though, doesn't it? As long, down Gaza as, long strip as, later, lads, as long as Serica has the Hindu in Kabul, you know. Eunice. Yeah, there's people on the guard. What's Eunice? What? He's a footballer for Tottenham. Eunice Cabal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's people on the guards and stuff like, hey, two non alcoholic shots for a quiz. <laughs> Just having a quiet night. <laughs> having a quiet night. Ooh, what music would they play? Um, Just 90s RB. DJ Khaled. Yeah. Not always there when you call. I'm always in Palestine, and I gave you Holy Land. Now, baby, be mine. Be mine. One of the, one of the stupidest ends to one of the <laughs> more difficult conversations we've ever attempted. This is how this is how mental this podcast is. Th that honestly, that last five minutes made me long for talking about 9/11. I was like, can we just go back to 9-11, lads? I feel like it's a little bit safer. Yeah. Can I just say, love you, love your terrorist. It's great. I'm a terrorist. <laughs> this is a terrorism. Yeah. Bing. Well, it's not offensive, is it? If you make the terrorist sort of... Welsh. Yeah, or Chechen. Was that what that was? Like, yeah. if you make him like that, because that doesn't mean that... Well, I suppose there was that uh, <laughs> <laughs> Russian poison, wasn't there? In Salisbury. Lithuanian Salisbury. Yeah. Have you ever said the word Salisbury before? I was in Salisbury. Salisbury. Yeah. I am from England. Yeah. I live in Salisbury now. Alexander Lithuanian Um. Uh, yeah. Murdered Russian spy. Yeah, but he was murdered by his own country, wasn't he? Yeah. And this is why I'm not a big fan. 
Horrible murdering cunt. Was it ever proven though? Yeah, I think Putin said yeah, he did it. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think it was? Somerset Council knocking off. <laughs> <laughs> I just tell you what, this foreign bastard's not paid his fucking council tax. Right. Oh, by the way. Get the fucking plutonium. My dad's having a bit of a uh, nightmare at the minute with the council. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I think we all knew where it was going to end up when we were in the Gaza Strip. When we were talking about Zionism, I think we all had a sense that we were going to talk about fucking Adam's dad's bins pretty quickly. You just burst the tire there. You turned that fast. <laughs> Is he losing garden? Are the Israeli next door? <laughs> <laughs> um, next chapter go I want screech marks I'm telling you right now <laughs> I'm get I'm I'm making a sound effect of like <laughs> that I'm getting it and we, and I would have used it <laughs> promise me, I'm cra I've been crap at updating the soundboard these are classics and I love them but I'm getting one <laughs> Adam <laughs> Could you, could you turn Alexander Litvinenko off? <laughs> Just, he, the worst thing is, he's a dying Russian spy. He's like, oh my God, I tried to move to Salisbury and the best that's got me. And honestly, that's what I look after I've had coke. That's how bad I look, bald and fucked. Right, ready? Right. Okay. Carl, I'm that. There you go. Adam, right. get it on. You've nailed that. Turn that fucking TV off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a cut point. Adam, has your dad had it? been having any problems with the council? Uh. <laughs> Up the PLO. So basically, they thought I was still living there, so his money's been affected. Oh, Jesus. So I had to ring up, and I swear to God, the woman, her name was Claire. Yeah. You know, I hate being on the phone anyway. To women. Uh, to anyone. <laughs> I've just got a problem with people who talk to me. Because, you know, in the past couple of years, there's been this big switch to sort of people who work with the public in customer service don't have to deal with any shit. And they've got this sort of holier-than-thou attitude. I don't need to be spoken to like that. And this woman, Claire, I was being as sound as it is possible to be. And she was being a horrible patronise and fat slag. And I swear to... What? Did you? I didn't say that to her. You just... You heard the fat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she was eating yeah. quavers on the phone. I right. swear to God, if she was in front of me while I was talking to her the other day, she'd be dead now. I'd have killed her. She was the oh, she was like, well, sir, you know, sir. The thing is, sir, I don't need to be spoken to like this, sir. And I was like, yeah, but I don't think you understand the reason for the phone call. She's like, no, I think I do. And I, what what had got you to that point? Because she, she, as soon as she right, says, so I rang up and I said, look. My dad's money's been affected because my dad's a very old and sick man, which we don't really discuss on this. But he, he it's... <laughs> and, so, he's and he's Palestinian. I was like, I, it's been affected because apparently you've got me down as still living here. I haven't lived here for seven years. And she was like, so where do you live now? And I was like, yeah. She was like, oh, well, you're not down as living there either. I was like, well, I am. She was like, uh, no, you're not. Someone else has been paying the council tax. I was like, they haven't. I've been paying the council tax. Why would anyone else be paying my council tax? So she checked it, and I was right anyway. She was like, so I don't really know what to do here. And I was like, what What? What do you think the reason for this phone call is? Because you haven't even asked me my dad's name yet or my dad's address. And she was like, um, excuse me, sir, but I don't need to be spoken to like that. And I was like, what are you talking about? She was like, well, you're, you're telling me that I've done something wrong. And I was like, well, you have. And she was like, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm dealing with your queries. And I went, can you tell me why you think I'm calling then? She was like, because you don't think anyone's been paying the council tax at your house? I was like, that's not why I rang. I rang because you've got me registered as living at my dad's house. She was like, it's absolutely nothing to do with me. I went, when I say you, I mean Liverpool City Council. I'm talking to you as a representative of the council. She was like, right, okay. She went, do you want to speak to a manager? And I went, yeah, I do. She put me onto a manager and she told the manager that I'd refused to let me dad give any information on the phone. She was like... Yeah, Claire's just told me that uh, you, your dad's not with you and you can't provide any security information. I was like, she hasn't even asked me my fucking dad's name. Tell Claire to fucking suck my big fat bumhole. Pause. Pause the tape. Claire. Did you say... <laughs> Two seconds, sir. I'm just going to put you on hold. Claire. <laughs> you might want to drop... Put your coffee down. 
Yeah. Right. Did you say that? No. No. Okay. I was quite aggressive with, with, with talking about. But you didn't say suck my big fat bum hole. No. Can't suck a bum hole. Some of the calls are recorded for training, <laughs> and this one just made the fucking training. You can't suck a bum hole. You can lick a bum hole or kiss one, or blow it. Well, I'm not going to prove you wrong. It's probably good. Back to the phone call. I see. Sorry, really. What happened? It hasn't been sorted. Your dad's got to get a legal representative. Oh my god, yeah. that was a unsatisfying end to that. <laughs> Where's dad like, though? I feel like someone was going to get a bum hole sucked, and then it's just like to be continued. What do you do if she came to your house? Yeah, she went, I've been told I'm going to suck your big fat bum hole. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Hang on, let me finish me question. Would you Would you just turn around and pull your cacks on? I'd, I'd make sure Sam was okay with it. Right. Sam. Sam, this girl wants to suck me with mole. Right. No, she doesn't want to. You've told her to. This, this girl needs to suck me with mole. She's been told by a supervisor. <laughs> she's got to suck me with mole. Yeah. <laughs> Doorstep or take her into the kitchen? Kitchen, that's unhygienic, isn't it? Do it in the bathroom. Right. Do Americans don't have washing machines in the kitchen? I think it's mad that we do. Yeah, they have utility rooms. Yeah. yeah. You've been seeing Jilly Bean's Twitter. Was it Jilly Bean? Yeah. And now I saw someone else, I think I saw someone retweet, it might have been Jilly Bean, but... Like the fake kid who took the selfie. I think people with money don't have washing machines and tumble dryers in the kitchen. Yeah. I think it's more uh, how you're doing in life, where you're from. Because I live in a house that has a washing machine in the kitchen. And then I grew up in those houses. But I think when you get bigger dollar, you get like a separate laundry room, don't you? Yeah. That's it, guys. Yeah. Let's keep talking PLO in Israel. <laughs> That is going to get that fucking laundry room. I think or get cancelled. Even for know. us, that first section, the cross section of things we've just discussed. And it was public. The council, washing machines. 9-11. 9-11. Zionism. I love it how you started with those two. That's what everyone will remember. <laughs> That's what will be in the comics. That fucking council bit was fire. <laughs> washing machines banter. Topped it off her touch. Can we have a break, please? Because I'm feeling dizzy. What's happening, guys? It's sponsor time, as always, and this week it's parcelstation.co.uk. If you work for or run a company that likes to send some shite to your customers, you might be able to save a little bit of money on your parcel costs via parcelstation.co.uk. They're a parcel management company, and they work with some of the biggest e-commerce places in the world, like Amazon and eBay, and they've also got contracts with all the biggest delivery companies, like Hermes, if you want your parcels lashed on the fucking roof, that is, DPD, Yodel, You've got contracts with everyone. And if you want to save a little bit of money on your company's parcel costs, go to their website, parcelstation.co.uk forward slash have a word and see what they can do for you. They might be able to save you a little bit of dough. They've even worked with one of our biggest sponsors, one of our longest serving sponsors, beer52.com. They're a great company. They're fans and supporters of the podcast. So if you are looking to get some parcels sent on a business level, go and support them. They support us. That's how adverts work. We appreciate you. Now let's get back to the episode. Section two. I thought you were going to say sex then. Sexual. Sexual. Body. Tension. Um, I did the Clear and Oblivious podcast uh, last week, which is Ryan Cullen and Gareth War. Gareth War's coming on in September. If you like a bit of the NFL, these lads are great comics from uh, north of the border. They do an NFL podcast called Clear and Oblivious. Clear and I was Obvious, on it. isn't it? Ch- what? They're obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Not oblivious. No, you said, you said obvious first and oblivious second. Clear and oblivious. Okay, I'm going to make this clear. It's clear and oblivious. Oh, you said clear is and it? obvious. Clear first. and obvious is the is what they call a foul in the NFL, if oh. something's clear and obvious. So their thing was, one of them knew loads about it. Ryan lo- knows loads about it, and Gareth doesn't. So they called the podcast clear oh and oblivious. Oh, my God. I've been following that for like a year or whatever since they started it. And yeah. I thought it was clear and obvious. At obvious clear on Twitter. Oblivious clear. Oblivious clear. Jesus fucking Christ. You fucking yes. idiot. Yes, I am stupid, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine one day. <laughs> if we had a scrap, it'd be amazing. Not today. We're in a great mood. Do you ever do have a way of boxing? No. Ah! No. Why? Do boxers I- make that noise? Is it more of a hess? No, no, they go, Box! <laughs> <laughs> Da-da, box, boxing, gonna do a boxing. Box, 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 punch. Punch, punch, punch. Yeah, like that. Like yeah. terrorists, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like that Boxers and terrorists. 
One and the when same. When I fuck, I go, shag. Who would you fight at them in this room? Me. I'd like to fight you. Yeah. I mean, in the boxing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, imagine punching you in the face. I swear to God. <laughs> On Patreon. Patreon. I wouldn't be punching. I would fully kick you in the head and get disqualified. No, I'm boxing. Lads. I can. Well. I feel like we've ended up accidentally doing the repetition of, I'll fucking kill you, mate. I'll fucking snap your dick off and shove it down your dad's ear. What about charity taekwondo? <laughs> so, how would that be different from boxing, considering you don't know taekwondo? The rules, innit? We're rules. Delaying, innit? All right. Spend six months training. Yeah. You just look like a bell end in a gi, and then you end up punching him the same Taekwondo, anyway. It's Taekwondo, like, kicks and that as well. It's like, what? Like kick! If you, if you kick someone Punch. in the head, you get, like, kick. three points. Or something. And then when you finish them, you go, Taekwondo! Like that. <laughs> You've got to finish on a triple move. Taekwondo! Like that. <laughs> same as Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu! Like that. That's pr- the rules. Yeah. Trying to see knife like... fight. Right. We're really struggling for Patreon-exclusive <laughs> content, aren't we? Charity knife fight. How'd you win? What if I, on Patreon, <laughs> stabbed you a bit? Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> um, we have had a question about Edinburgh. People going up. It's the it's the fringe. It's Edinburgh. It's the Edinburgh fringe. I feel like we should clarify as well, because we've spoke about Edinburgh in such bad terms on this podcast, like. It's it's difficult to go. It's a lot of pressure on the comics, and it's a h- long, hard month when you do the full month. However, but it is a good festival, oh my, it's especially as a punter. Well, and if you ever do want to go up there, in terms of making you a better comic as well, like yeah. it's fucking great. I've done five full hours of stand up that push me to do better comedy. Like if you don't do that, you can very easily just have your twenty twenty five minutes and not turn stuff over. Like, you turn stuff over, I turn stuff over, and it's part, partly the skill of that was learned by going, shit, I've got to do an hour next year. Yeah. Doesn't half fucking stick a well, rock I've got to do an hour ass. next week. <laughs> All right! <laughs> I haven't written. I've spent no time on it. Adam Rowe at the Fringe 2021, who's drinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you do? Slam. Yeah. Not bad. On the, you know, on the form where you're feeling like what it's going to be, one of the things was, will there be crowd interaction? And my agents have filled it in for me and, say, I, and said no. And I was like, the will. <laughs> the first 20 minutes is going to be... <laughs> nice shoes, shoe wearer. <laughs> um, that's some of the banter you will enjoy. Uh, Adam Rowe show, who's drinking? Sorry, what's the... Your show's Imperious, isn't it? Yeah. You'll have seen the advert at the start of the... Do we stick it? We're going to start at the start of the... Episode, the ticket thing? Uh, a, no, I think... Uh, we'll do something for the start of this episode. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can get it from adamrow.co.uk forward slash shows. Because I've updated my website for the first time in a year. Um, Lyndon says, Hi, Lids. Me and the missus are thinking of heading to the fringe. I know it's the COVID fringe, so it won't be completely the same, but wondered what advice you had for those going for the first time. Love y'all, Lyndon. Well, first of all, there's a, a few people going that I really like. Uh, a lot of them have been on the couch before. Alfie Brown's going. Brennan Reese is going. Garrett Millerick is going. Will Duggan is going. Oh. Eshan Akbar is going. Lauren Patson is going. There's probably loads more. I literally scribbled that list together. Can I just add Ray Bradshaw to that? I just Ray saw my Bradshaw. mate Ray Bradshaw is doing his show. Mark Nelson. One of my favourite guys. He's a cunt. Mark Nelson. But he's Gareth funny War. though. Funny cunt. Yeah. Mass- Gareth Wall's a fucking yeah. twat. Yeah. Gobshite. Funny yeah. little ginger gobshite. Um, His podcast is called Clear and Ob- Oblivious. Yeah, Obscurity. What? <laughs> um, advice. So it is going to be a weird fringe. Normally what I would say is don't fill your day up with booked and advanced tickets. Just walk around and get flyered and go and see something random at the fringe. I don't know how much of that's going to be this year. I wonder if it's going to be pretty similar. There's going to be... I think it's going to be... L- I think it's people 10% are going to be of the shows, isn't it? Right, it's normally four thousand. It's about four fifty. If you're up there, people are going to want your trade because I think there's yeah. less shows, but I think there'll be less people. Do you know what? I you can't really speak on a COVID fringe because, like we're saying, we don't know what it's going to be like. But you just got to assume it's going to be similar. What I used to say to friends was: before you go up, get in the brochure, and every night pick one show that you know you want to go and see. Yeah. Like someone that you are a fan of, like a bigger name, whatever. Like you like Sean Walsh. Go and make sure, because all those big dogs are usually, nearly all of them, aren't they? Are seven till ten. Yeah. Like 
make that the focus of your night. And then instead of going, oh, well, then we'll book a five o'clock show beforehand and a two o'clock show. I think then sort of see what the reviews are saying, see what other comics are recommending on podcast or whatnot. And then sometimes see who you bump into. Yeah. Because... Because if you bump into a comic and you like them and they're hustling, they fucking need you in their show. Yeah. So that's a good way to do it as well. Yeah. And if you walk around the free fringe and see five shows across like your three days that you're there, you'll see two that are brilliant, two that are fine, and one will be the worst thing you've ever seen, but you'll get a story out of it. Every time you're at a bar at the fringe, one of the natural things to say is, Oh, what you've been, what you've been seeing today. What's the best thing you've seen? And if you end up just having a, a little bit of that to and fro, you'll start hearing the names of people that you fancy. Like, just don't ram your stuff full of like seventeen pound tickets because there's so many more comics out there hustling that need your trade at like five pm, six pm, or even later. Come and see us, twelve pound fifty cunts. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want another question? Yeah. So have a good time, Lyndon. Have a good time, everyone going to the Fringe. Maybe we'll be there one day, but uh, I think Adam's cracked it with the three-day. Three-day run. Sold about a third of me tickets so far. Um, no, about half now. That's good. Yeah. But, but so we, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I think well, what we've in a big room. I feel like we have slagged it off a little bit. I think what I've slagged off more than anything is cost so f- much fucking money, and you've got to be there for a whole month. That's what I don't want to do anymore. I want yeah. to do this oh, do you know what I'm twice a week to? and then that for three days a year. Do you know what I'm looking forward to the most? Normally in Edinburgh, you're staying in some fucking shit old apartment, aren't you? I'm staying in a spa hotel for four nights. <laughs> Mama like that? Mama like Are you that? taking Sam? No. No, you're taking Ishan? No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there. You're taking Carl with your matching I'm going to be there. On my own, I'm going to get up every day, have a little fucking I mean, I usually go. massage or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what, from Penguins? <laughs> yeah. I've only missed one, haven't I? Haven't I? When I was away. Yeah, when you were in Jap. Japland. Yeah. <laughs> um, so have a lovely time. Thank you. In your spa hotel. Yeah, the McDonald Hotel. The McDonald Hotel. Yeah, on Holyrood. Down, tell everyone down where the you're way. staying. Yeah, just around the corner the from Pleasant. Tell everyone where you're staying and when. Smarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good lad. Mate, I know he's got fans. But Room he's not 218. He's not fucking <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chase though, mate. There's a lot of fucking raw fans outside. <laughs> yeah, no, no one who, who, who listens to this podcast. Nobody. No. Yeah. Yeah. Apart definitely. from Tom <laughs> Twistleton. Right. Question from uh, Mo. Uh, it's suggestion. He says, Hey, up, lids. I have an idea for a patron exclusive. Why doesn't Adam stab Carl a bit? You see, <laughs> give the fans what they want. Ahead of the curve. And we're ready and we're prepared. Let's do it. The no, cucumber. Please don't let Adam off that Oh, knife. my God, no. It's so sharp, Adam. Yeah, no, go on. Keep going. What's the question? I'm not doing it. What's the question? I, I'm, I'm Why is he being acting the picture? What's up? <laughs> the picture. Wrong side. It's more, it's more to the cheek. Yep. Audio listeners, enjoy that the one. The McDonald Hotel. He'll be signing <laughs> these outside. <laughs> no! Oh, no! What are you doing? No! No, I want to get it back. Adam! Adam, Stop you're it. fucking mental. For audio listeners, he was oh. stabbing the picture. What are you doing that for? For audio listeners, he was stabbing the picture and not Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no! no! <laughs> There might have been a few seconds where people on Spotify were like, oh, I'm worried about these guys. Um, He says, I have an idea for Patreon exclusive. Basically, Adam and Dan switch roles with Finley and Carlos. Adam and Dan... (laughs) You wouldn't see the episode. Shut up, lads. Adam and Dan (laughs) fucking stabbed that cunt. This podcast survived before you got here. Do it, And it'll survive when you've got... Lads, do it. Fucking yeah. do There'd it. There'd be one Stab clip me. every four weeks. Adam and Dan do the production. It'd be by me. Adam and Dan do the production and editing, or at least pretend to, and Carl and Finn do all the features. Keep up the great work. That's from Mo. What do you think about that, Adam? I, uh, <laughs> no. Fuck that, Mo. You seem sound. I like how you think, but you're wrong. You did wrong, boy. They can't do what we can do. That's Put the, the knife down now. Yeah, yeah. Put the knife down. I don't want to put the knife no, on. No, because you're tired. You've done 12 <laughs> shits this morning. I don't want you with weaponry. Plus, I've just cut something with that knife, and it's so sharp. It's fine. It's fine. 
If they were production, you wouldn't see or hear the episode. It'd get deleted somehow. Episode 76, when we didn't have producers. It didn't look good. We just about scuffed it. <laughs> what happened, though? Didn't you lose some camera footage? No. That was episode 77. Fuck you. Right. Yeah. When are we going to get the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> <It> goes, <laughs> if, you go, if you go back to YouTube, it goes, episode 76, Paul Smith. Episode 77 isn't there. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it's in audio. And episode 78. So, yeah. And then I joined. And then yeah. you turned up. And Carl's horses have the same cameras on. Yep. Because it's dead hard. Um, um, so no mo, I like. I'm, they're not I'm funny all enough, these, and no. we, we're we're not. Uh, we're, yeah, not me, we're not shit enough at life you want to Finn be given such here. a monotonous job. If you want Finn here? <laughs> hey, pay me all the money you want for this monotonous body. job. I He'd have to it. knife me, which he's going to do in eight minutes because he's a. Me and Finn are going to start a pod called con- Java Paired. Java Paired. Yeah. That, that what you went for there? Yeah. yeah? Java, Java Paired. Paired. Yep. Wow. Gave. It might do it. <laughs> gave a bird. Good. Nearly did the jokey joke, and then I did. I did not do a jokey joke. <laughs> it's time for Java Bird. Java Bird. Would people sounds be interested in a dodgy. little spin-off of? Uh, we call it the producers, obviously. There you go. Yeah, the producers, and you could talk about subtitling. I don't do that. There's, there's your niche. I don't do that. You you have done it though. I have. So have you. Yeah. I just talk about used to, in a lovely way. Uh, heard you talking about the food shortages in shops. Made me wonder. If you were only allowed three items of food from the shop, but you could buy unlimited amounts of those three to survive on for a whole month, what would they be? Uh, Ready meals? And you can pick one type of drink. <laughs> Same rules. That's from Sally in Mine Head. Ready break. Ready meals? Just get unlimited amounts of spaghetti bolognese. Right. So that's one of yours. So you go unlimited spag ball, then you're allowed two more. Unlimited carbonara. Unlimited roast dinners. Right. What are you having for breakfast? Carbonara. Right. It's a ready meal roast dinner. <laughs> so, yeah, what is a ready meal roast dinner? It's a roast dinner that's ready. In a, as a meal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put the knife down because you're such a daft cunt and I really don't like the feel of you having a knife. No, I want it. Gen- genuinely put, put, put it to one side. You're freaking me out. What a spork. Yeah. Stephen French. I just put it over there. getting cut today. Um... What was the question? You're allowed to pick three types of food. So does it have to be like three I can't, three ingredients in it? No, no, it's not. You can you could do that, I think, if you want to do pizza, ready meals. Um, genuinely, I can't start the day Chicken properly strips, without corn, chips, cornflakes. And bread. Chicken shit. Yeah. Ch- chicken strips. Chip butties all month. Chip Ooh. butties. Can sort of make a sort of shit wrap with the chicken strips, with the bread. Can make toast. Can make... Playing buses. Your poos might actually slow down a little bit with yeah. that they much dodge. That would poos. genuinely be my three. Adam's like, Bread, chicken and chips. I'm really worried. I've only had two poos today. What drink are you going for? <sighs> Lucas Aid, keep it scarce. Does tea count? Yeah. It'll be tea then. Because I'm surely I can have water at home. Yeah, tap. Council yeah. pop. So I'll just get tea bags. That's not water drink, and tea. That's an ingredient. That's a, I think that's not a drink, sorry. Well, I think it has to be a drink. It's not a drink, is it? Tea is a, a drink, yeah. It's a bag of future drink. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was so beautiful. Oh, that's a good question. Dick, did you? I, I know I miss a lot of what Carl says, but that was beautiful. It's not a drink, is it? It's a bag of future drink. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning, Carl. I love how your mind works. Don't oh. cut him. Um, yeah, the... The milk and meat tea thing. Um, I can have it, but it, I, I I wouldn't want it. Yeah. So, mate, um, cherry coke. Oh. Cherry coke. I've still got the water at home. Mate, you're not coming out of this month looking great, are you? Diet bro? cherry coke. <laughs> oh, 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 sorted. <laughs> Diet bread. Sorted. <laughs> yeah. What would you go for? I need cornflakes in the morning. I need to start cornflakes like are that. Better, cornflakes or frosties. And I could probably Cornflakes have. or frosties. Um... I have frosties occasionally as like a fucking treat. When I had the Rona, when I had the Rona, I, my appetite was coming in and out and I asked my neighbour for frosties and she laughed in my face like, I, like a 40 year old going, excuse me, I didn't go to the shop. <laughs> Could you get me some frosties? And then obviously Frosty. we were in isolation. Cornflakes are just I shite love cornflakes. frosties. Cornflakes late at night are power. Oh, yes. shy super, super cornflakes. Oh, mate. Oh, I totally. had some last night. Late night cornflakes up my ass. They're just shy frosties. 
No, they're not. They are. They're not. No, Frosties are just fucking council cornflakes. Yeah. No, they're not. They yeah, are. they are. They're just cornflakes with sugar on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, cornflakes are better. Do you remember, no, right? Do you remember ricicles? They're the Frosties version of uh, rice. Uh, really, yeah. uh, I remember. <laughs> What was that? I remember. Me, 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 me. <laughs> do you remember, remember mead? Um, so rations of spam for breakfast. Yeah. Spam bussy, though. Fried spam bussy. Early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on a pogo. Okay? <laughs> the 96. Spam and done! <laughs> what about booze? Are you going booze free? Because you can have booze as you drink. You can't. No, you can't. Only <laughs> Gin. <laughs> yeah. Gin on your cornflakes. With no mixers. Yeah. Oh, that's a thing. Milk has got to be one of your things if you're going to have it with your cornflakes. I love milk. That's your drink. Ah, right. AIDS. Um, Not a drink. I'm going. This is a horrible situation milk, that none of us are corn... ever going to be in. <laughs> You are not allowed to do that with the questions. I are. am. This is stupid. It's made up. <laughs> Mate, there's a would you rather next. Would you rather give up dairy or blowjobs for the rest of your life? Well, I'm never going to be in that situation. End of pod. <laughs> Good night. Oh, what a horrible question. This dairy is from or Carly Pimlet. Would you rather give Can up? Can I still fuck people in the bomb? Dairy or blowjobs for the rest of your <laughs> life? Done. Can you answer well, the question? I'm lacto free and I'm married. <laughs> hey! This guy. Neither. Yeah, I could live without blowjobs, me. She could give me a sloppy Andy, put it in a pussy. Shh, shh, shh. What? Sloppy Andy? <laughs> Spit on her hand. Oh, do. Yeah. Does she throw it, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> when you were staying at Sam's mum and dad. What? Spider Man. That's the curtains closed. <laughs> That's a bad question, now. <coughs> No, not happy with it. No, I like me dairy, me. Cheesecakes and blowjobs. Milk. Two best things in the world, I think. Mm. Well, I, I, I'm giving up blowjobs, me. Yeah. I, I, I can mean, live without blowjobs as long as I get everything else. I fucking love vanilla slices. I mean, blowjobs are great. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you're living, when you're having a vanilla can slice. Can we have a blowjob as one of our three pieces of food? It's not food, is it, Carl? Right. It is for them. No, it's all it at co-op. It is for them. Unless they eat your cum. Oh, <laughs> it's just like, it's the worst, that's the worst thing you can think of. But it's oh. always there though. I know. It's I never know. like, he's he there. Just, he just refuses to filter it. <laughs> he never did this stuff before you cunts turned up. And then he's like, yeah, fuck Dan. Like, when you eat your cum, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with him facing his best mate. <laughs> I think they're driving to fucking Blackpool. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. <laughs> I'm giving up blowjobs. Me too. I'm not. I've, I, honestly, oh, yeah, I've asked Laura when I'm next going to a blowjob, and she basically went, get me good and pissed. Romance. Is it true? Does marriage really kill blowjobs? No, 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 I think some I think some ladies... Oh. I think right. some ladies are like the old... Some ladies love it, don't they? Some ladies are like, I want to suck a dick. Laura, I want to tickle me throat with it. Laura, his literally... <laughs> <laughs> A common phrase, though. Laura didn't say that. Just uh, this is a public episode, and she watches and listens. Love you, babe. But she went. It's where you wee from, and you know when. What's she, she saying? She went. It's where you wee from, yeah. and then it was like, Ugh. and then you're like, yeah, I can see your point. I can see your point. Yeah, but where does she wee from? Do you go downtown? Um, we don't. Bit of a no fan. Baby. I'm a fan of going downtown. Are you a fan of going downtown? Yeah, I love a little left me. Right, good. Yeah. Okay. I, I enjoy it. In it, do you like in your Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I've had it, when she's got me good and drunk. No, I don't mind it. Even on like a, a sober Tuesday, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Suck up a mold as well. Poo poo town. <laughs> the other side of the tracks. Tracks? Yeah. yeah. The wrong side of the tracks. She's got stitches. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Let's get it back on the fucking track. Um. Antonio Rooney, hey lids, came across a game called The Shame of Life the other day. Antonio Rooney. Rooney! She fucking sounds, her name sounds Scouse. She is Scouse. I know she's, is she Scouse? I don't know if she is. She's got to be. She is. Um, hey lids, came across a game called The Shame of Life uh, the other day. Basically, asked questions to start discussion. Obviously, stole your idea of a would you rather. Thinking back to school days, would you rather piss your pants in school or shit yourself at a sleepover? Knowing Adam, he's done both. Can't wait for the 15th 
thanks to an OG Patreon being a legend and letting me be his plus one. Rooney is going to be there. So would you rather piss your pants in school or shit yourself no, at a sleepover? Now. What age? Can we put an age on this? Because at four, you're like, ah, 15. 15. Damn. I think it's, I'd rather piss myself at school. Oh, I'd rather shit myself in a sleepover. Everyone. All day. Right. Could you just go, hey, lads, fucking be sound here. Yeah. If everyone's looking at you going, ah, it's game over, isn't it? So With our group of friends. No, but there's more of a chance of that happening, isn't it? You can't no. just everyone in school ignore no. this. It, with our group of friends, yeah, but Steve, could, but you could deny Josh, it. You could deny it. Mark Dowling, you could deny it. Ryan, you could deny it. It doesn't, Carl. Ma you could deny time. it in school. You could deny it. No, but I mean, you could deny it in school. Yourself you're is telling me in school you could go, that didn't happen, and any of the school would be like, oh, he said, he, but it's he said more it didn't chance of being believed. innocent until proven guilty. Bollocks! You'd rather piss. So we're sitting in a break and you piss your kecks. You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit myself on a night out or a yeah. sleepover. On school. a sleepover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Piss is better than poo in all situations. Mad. What the, are you the, talking the thing, about? The thing is, the sleepover, it's everyone knows. Everyone knows in school if you piss your kecks. Yeah, I know, but. Everyone, like, everyone in the school is going to know that you pooed yourself at the sleepover. No, but the people who go, oh, I don't believe that. People can see <laughs> no, the piss. They, no, there wouldn't be. Nah. And there could, no, there no, could, no, no, there no, no. There could be girls at the sleepover. We went to a boys' school. Oh, no. At the sleepover. No, there, there wouldn't be. <laughs> you took that very seriously. There wouldn't be. <laughs> I went to Cardinal Rahim and there was no girls ever. <laughs> there would be not oh, a wrong, single. Right. There would be not. <laughs> Order. There would be not a Order. single Bang person Bang it. Order. in the whole school. There wouldn't be a teacher who didn't believe you shit yourself at the sleepover. I think they'd give you some shit for it, the teachers as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd still go for that. Yeah. Adam Rowe, here. Finn, here. Gal, shit herself. Good nickname. Teachers are good at nicknames, aren't they? Gal, shit herself. The, te the teacher sounds drunk as well. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Said Edmonds. There's absolutely no way it's better to poo yourself. Well, uh, you, uh, hang on. Hang I on. am giving my answer. I couldn't give a fuck and your what answer's you think. wrong. Hey, you're, we're allowed to debate it. Call about when it's so <laughs> random what Carl gets fired up about. Like, <laughs> this is my right to believe. <laughs> I say that to him all the time. Right. Hang on, though. You can. There is a situation at school where you could piss yourself, but it's low. What about if it's. No, you're changing the scenario. No, I'm not. It, you, we can specify when it's okay. Then the sleepover, there's one blind person. Right, I'll do it there. So, okay, changing the scenario. You what it? kind of fucking sleepovers are you going for? <laughs> I've got a one. I've got, got one, you in the blind. I've got one blind for them. Then I shit myself. Right. There you go. I've Your sleepovers at school were fucking mental when you were a carer for a blind guy. Do you think blind people don't have a sense <clears> of smell? You just hate it in the toilet. <laughs> they don't know where they are, do they? <laughs> like. Carl, uh, I'm not pointing any fingers here, uh, but something smells off. Oh, yeah, you're in the toilet, John. <laughs> oh, that feels weird. Am I? Blind, John. I can, I can, I can, hear, I can hear the telly. <laughs> I'm in me. I'm I just on the tell couch. him it was him. Right. <laughs> They've still got... They just can't see. Yeah, exactly. Blind people know okay, when they've then, pooed themselves. Okay, then they're blind and the person who can't smell. Blind people know when they've pooed themselves. Don't yeah. they? They do, Adam. <laughs> they do. They do. You, maybe not, but they do. Um, I'm still picking. I've, yeah. yeah. What, what's the scenario in school then, Dan? <sighs> Where's low? Where's the... Uh, in the pool? That's the, no, come on. You can't piss yourself. In the yourself. changes. In the, well, that's the best place to piss yourself, really, isn't it? Yeah. Because everyone knows, but at least you get to do a quick change. Change. Dry up with lost property. That's why you take extra undies. I used to take four pairs of undies to school. <laughs> Are you oh. sponsored by underwear today? <laughs> take four pairs of underwear everywhere. It's fucking it. You didn't really. I come did. on, come on. I had you four pairs it. of boxes in my pants. Did he? In his pants. He used to put them in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what about Adam Rowe. Fuck, he's got a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> he was a kid in Spanish once. I won't name him. And uh, he was caught stroking his boner. He wasn't wanking. He was. It, it was like it. it was like he was petting a cat. Do you know, like a, like Doctor Evil, like just having a little. We had a really ugly Spanish teacher. She looked like a man. She looked yeah. like David Silva. Her name was Path. Yeah. Right. And he was caught stroking. Now, 
was he um was it under the table? This was in like year seven as well, and literally was it crafty wank? No, it wasn't a wank. He was just like he was stroking oh. his pants. Oh, that's bad! Like literally until we left school, it was like, eh, "You want a shag path?" <laughs> Can I just say, out of the if you added that as an option, I'd take the first two before I took that. Yeah, because if you poo your pants, all right, it's not good. You are that is gonna hang around in it. Like if you'd have crap your pants at a sleepover, he'd still be talking it now, talking yeah. about it now. I only sleep over blind people. <laughs> it's kind of a real layoff. The, I had a similar experience to the Spanish thing, but at a sleepover. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, Whenever Finn starts talking, I'm like, I wonder how much we're going to learn about him here. Like, <laughs> Finn's got a memory. Like, I remember Not someone's shit, dad though, coming in when I was sleeping. Go on. It's, it is, it's, this is one of the ones in the dark recesses of the mind. Um, okay. So there was like <laughs> six of us at the sleepover. Put it down. Uh, six of us. And we were watching Family Guy. Um, and this, the lad that was there, I'm not going to name him because I still know him. Um, his blanket started moving and we were like, right, okay, he's having right. us on. He's having us on. I, right, lo I love real. <laughs> uh, what are you doing with that blanket? <laughs> not a like, oh, right, sorry. I thought that was funny. <laughs> it was like a very valid thing to be covered with, Dan. A blanket. Right, go on, sorry. We were at a sleepover. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no sleeping bags. Just fucking old sleeping age. Bags. You never have sleeping bags? in the fucking garden. Duvet covers? Just blankets? I think when people say blanket, they uh, mean du It was duvet a duvet, cover. yeah, it was a duvet. So sorry, Dan. It was a duvet. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> what was he covered with? Sorry. That's I honestly- a weird thing to- That was, that was a so A blanket weird. and a sleepover? Being a cunt to Finn. <laughs> Where was this? Being a cunt to the Finn is so much 90s. fun. The <laughs> 90s. I thought everyone would join in and I just feel like a bully now. Sorry, Finn. Uh, so yeah, we, the blanket started moving and we were like, all oh, right, he's having a song, right? He's just having a joke. Jokey wank. So one of the other lads at the sleepover just did like a quick whip, whip the blanket, oh. full on just having a go at himself How far while the Family Guy was on. Oh, Lois though. Was Lois on the screen Yeah, now? yeah, Lois. No, it was Joe. That, that's what we were confused the about. The fella? Yeah. Uh, so... And then somehow he managed I to. I was going to wank over Family Guy to be the Asian news reporter. Trisha Takanawa. Yeah, Trisha Takanawa. Nailed it there. Yeah. Or the weatherman. It's raining, raining on! <laughs> um, it's windy. Yeah, I just it's thought. That, I thought I couldn't not bring that up. That was seemed like the perfect time. <sighs> and it was quite heavy, sorry. Was that you? No, not, that's not heavy. Me. What happened in the aftermath, though? So the aftermath was just like. Five teenage lads just screaming like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" Yeah. Then the lads. Um, and he didn't finish. The lads' mum came down. Oh, and was no. like, "What's going on?" And we had to be like, "Shit, we've got to make a decision here because if we dob him in, this could be game over for the sleepover." So we went, "Oh, we we're just like mucking about, you know." You once fucking okay. wanking mum. Was it his mum? No, no. It wasn't his house. It was just one of the lads. It was there. an away leg. This this same lad did other things at other sleepovers that was just a bit weird. We're not quite sure what happened. For example? Uh, this is going to sound like a lie. Uh, he um, spread his arse cheeks, uh, bent over. <laughs> Who is this kid? Because he loves to buy. <laughs> bent over and then asked us to uh, throw coins into his arse. <laughs> May. I swear to God. Great game of jingle. I love how this has just occurred to Finn. The first story was like, yeah, there's a wang. Oh, hang on. One more. One more coins. <laughs> yeah. That one, we, he did get caught doing it by the the stepdad of the lad whose sleepover it was. And he came Why? Around. Why? Did what? someone throw a coin in his arsehole? Yeah, people were doing it. <laughs> did I, you I, do it, Finn? No. Did you throw a coin in I was, that man's I was, just, I was kind of the, the one going, uh, like, what is going on? Have you all yeah. lost your minds? This is when, uh, you know, Sucking on a bum hole would work out because you'd end up paying for parking. It's just an elaborate game of jingles, isn't it? I've played jingles. Jingles? I've played jingles. Is that like the Aldi Jenga? No, it's um so like you all stand round and like so we can play it outside, yeah. You all get like a, a quid. Yeah. And we all throw it towards the wall, and whoever gets closest to the wall wins all the quids. Oh yeah, because you were in prison in America in the nineteen twenties. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. I played jingles in school. <laughs> we used to play jingles at dinner time in school. Yeah. All right. I ever won one like a pack of cigarettes? Yeah. Did you did you play it when Al Capone got shot, or was it like a moment of silence? Used to go out the back and play jingles, and then John Capone got murdered on Valentine's Day. 
Did like, uh, this is not weird to me. No. We play it at like family gatherings as well. <laughs> like, a, like a christening or something. You go outside the, the parish club and you play a little game of jingle. Right. Little Tony's been fucking christened. <laughs> Round the back of the Methodist. Let's get some fucking jingles going. You played against Nana Nana Row. Row. Go on, you, say, you say that, but I can show you a picture. Of I don't you. want to see a picture of your family <laughs> putting jingles. Do you not want a game? It's fucking great. I play bum old jingles, though. Yeah. Did Nana Row ever go I, take it up or not? You can also win. So, fucking hell, Adam, I've been for a sleepover in real. I, knew, I know some new rules. You can also win by, like, by jingling it. Like, so if you've already threw your quid and I hit your quid with my quid, I've won your quid. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a good game. That sounds like uh, child abuse. <laughs> Do you ever play knuckles? Fucking two pound coin and right in his bum hole. You play knuckles, you play knuckles. knuckles. Two pound coin for the fucking madman. Yeah. Woo! So you, you have to spin the coin. And catch it in your fingers. Yeah. So, oh, see that's a... There's a pound coin there, isn't there? Give us a quid. There was a pound coin there before. Stin Finn stole me quid! What? No. Don't pay him this month. He's going to sleep over, Dave Bastard. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, what you do is, right, so you, you have to get it on the edge like that, and you have to knock it. Yeah. Right, and get it. You have to knock it so that it's hanging over there. Right, I'll, Skills. I'll, and you flick it. <laughs> yeah, flick it. It's catch it. Fucking quid brigade over here. So then you catch you, it. Sniff that quid. Where's it So from? you <laughs> flick it, and then you have to flick it and catch it. Then spin it. Yeah. Like this. Oh, we did it between fingers. And then catch it between your fingers. Fingers, and then? And then they would put their knuckles down there, and you'd fucking launch at their knuckles and cut their fingers like open. That. Oh, my God. Can I tell you how we played it at Hudson Grammar School? Same game, spin it, get it in your knuckles, and then someone would make a rugby post. A goal, yeah. And you had to flick it over the rugby post. No, we had a goal. Yours is, and we then you had to break one. someone's finger. We used right, to do a right, footy right. one. Yeah, it wasn't over it, you had to score. Yeah, right, yeah. And then right. if you used a two-pound coin, if you were mad, and that like, break your knuckle. With bumholes. Right, right. With bumholes. Spin and bend over, lad. Catch you How's that lad doing these days, you know? Because I know he's, you all know each other in real. He's uh, just a, a, a bricky. He's just a normal guy now. It's yeah. quite weird. Yeah. Okay. Just a normal guy. <laughs> Public episode. If you want uh, Finn to open up a bit more about the yeah. child ab Wednesday. abuse. Should we did it with fingers, Adam? Not thumbs. Like that. Yeah. Uh, Gav McAllister says, what childhood playground game would you turn into a multi-million pound pro sport Jingles. if you could? I'd go British Bulldog. Carnage, Gav McAllister. Thank you. Gav, never, I've never had stuff fucking drop in like this before. I feel Finger like the new kid. That was good as well. Finger the new kid. When a kid coming to the school for the first time. What? Like the new kid. Remember yeah. Raul? You, yeah, you'd hunt him down and finger the bum. Raul Pappy. Raul, Raul Pappy. Raul what? <laughs> Raul Pappy. That was his oh. name, wasn't it? Raul Papi. He was Brazilian and he got fingered. There was a Brazilian kid. Yeah, and he told us. Sorry, he... no, no, no. Give me the fucking thing. No, no, no. Adam, what fucking... <laughs> what, sh sh what Brazilian family emigrate to fucking Dovecot? West Arby. Oh, sorry, West Arby. It's not funny then. <laughs> I'm sick of seeing Brazilian immigrants in West Arby. Fucking hell, lad. Where's that Brazilian immigrant? Dovecot. <laughs> Dovecot, Dan. West Derby is well more like palatable for the, the human existence than a favela. <laughs> never been said before. It will never be said by any human ever again. But yeah, he came to our school and everyone thought he played. He lied saying he played. Oh, lad, he used to play for the under-12s in Brazil. And he's yeah, fucking he garbage at footy. <laughs> yeah. Put me finger then. Yeah. Finger the new kid. Finger the new kid. He'd hunt him down on the playground. Someone to pull his pants down. Someone to finger the bum hole. Right. Yeah. It's basically Shawshank, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You were bogs. Fresh yeah. fish. Yeah. Brazilian fish. Who's fresh meat. Yeah. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. It's fresh. It's fresh fish. Oh, I thought it was fresh meat. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Fresh fruit. <laughs> you fresh <laughs> fruit. Glad you're not wearing, holding the knife now. Oh, wow. You never play finger the new kid, no? <laughs> Did you ever wear, wear poor little Raul Pappy as a fucking <laughs> That's a real human name. morph suit? That's a real Shout out, Raul Pappy. <laughs> I wonder where he is now. Uh, last question in this section. Now then, um, I don't know if you can remember one of the opening seeds, uh, scenes from Die Hard with a Vengeance. Dan, you will remember it. It was 95. <laughs> um, I wasn't even on a pogo yet. <laughs> <laughs> in the scene, the Hans Gruber's brother makes John McClane wear a sandwich board saying, I hate the N-word. 
in the middle of Harlem. Hang on, does it say I hate the N word or I hate? Oh no, it says it. The N word. It says I hate. <laughs> plural. Right. Yeah. So uh, he's not. It's not like progressive. No, no, no. They don't. No. Yeah. It was. There was. It wasn't vague. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like he was N- going, I hate the N-word. N- really bad. Star, star, star. It was the full yeah. shebang. Yeah. Um, in the middle of Harlem, he has to wear it on a sandwich board. He's saved by Samuel L. Jackson just before a mob kills him. So if you could choose anywhere in the world with something really offensive on the sandwich board and mm-hmm. make each member of the team wear it for 60 minutes, where would it be? And what would your sandwich board say? Let's hear something different from each of you. Cheers, guys. Keep up the great work. I'd say Carl. So the Gaza Strip with a sandwich board saying, I think you've both got a point. (laughs) That would that'd be a problem, would it? I think it would, yeah. Yeah. Piss everyone off, wouldn't it? I'd say that was a grand ground zero with um, Bin Laden was right. Bin Laden was right. (laughs) What did he believe? Death of the West. Right in the middle of ground, like Joey the memorial is. He's standing there and he's got music blasting. Where's what's the most contentious thing? Alabama. I bum men. <laughs> Dovecott. I am Brazilian. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> Fuck off to West Derby! <laughs> what are you doing out there? We don't like your type! Much less palatable around the end. Fucking attacking midfielding cunt! What would you pick? I'm going with I bum men in Alabama. I bum men. It's like Al- Top Gear did, didn't he? Remember? What? Top Gear did it. Top Gear did this? Did yeah. they reference the, the Die Hard with a Vengeance? No, they had to drive through Alabama and they had to write things on the side of each other's cars. And they did that. It was like, um, uh, man love is okay. Like, fuck NASCAR. And then, uh, vote Hillary. Or something like that. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah. It's funny, but like, not quite yeah, as Man love rules, okay. Hillary for president. What was the other one for? Go down. It's three, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, country and western is rubbish. What could you? What? Where in Liverpool? What would be the? If you were gonna fuck me over with a sandwich board in Liverpool, where would you? Book. Where would you send me? And what would you? What would the sandwich board Put say? You outside Anfield with today's copy of the you know what? Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Anywhere in Liverpool. Oh, yeah, don't, 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 you don't need to actually write it. You could just get a newspaper sandwich board <laughs> yeah. with... Yeah, yeah, that's probably the only one. Be dead in about half an hour. Yeah. Seriously, though, would you? You'd be battered. Really? Yeah. Of course you would. How long? How long? Because it, Half an hour, maximum. Right. On a, th- on a Thursday afternoon... In Anfield. See, like in the my area of Anfield. Day. I wonder who I'd get twatted by. Some fucking nana. You fucking nonce. No, you get some dads coming around. Be like five dads, probably. The dads per grade. Yeah. You wouldn't. Yeah, that wouldn't be very nice. Okay. What about in Preston or Chester? Well, I was pre- in Chester. Yeah. We've sold out of ploughmans. That'll go fucking <laughs> absolute nightmare. <laughs> Patisserie Valerie has closed down. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Where will I buy my milk food? <laughs> Which is just a fucking nancy way of saying vanilla slice, milk um, ch- there's no way I don't know if you could get twatted around Chester I ge- genuinely don't know what it would take to get twatted it would probably this, the most likely you are to get chat is to wear the sun oh, sorry guys the yeah the Voldemort newspaper mm. in Chester and get twatted by a scouser who's come for a day out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that is the <laughs> who's hell? Chester's rival like geographically or football wise? Wrexham, or? Ellesmere Port, but probably Wrexham. <laughs> Blue Plants Aquarium's boss. I think <laughs> I think you can tell a lot by a town by who their rival is. Who's Chester's <laughs> rival? Wrexham, <laughs> the old battle. You remember Ellesmere it well. Port. Ellesmere Port. Yeah. Rough there. So, <laughs> honestly, it's pretty fucking nasty. I should know, because like the Gaza Strip of the northwest of England. <laughs> what? It? I'm not even joking. Have you been in the queue for Wagamama at Cheshire Oaks? <laughs> Motherfuckers get elbows out. What? Out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's been the second section <laughs> of today's wonderful podcast. Thanks to David Jukes for that. Uh, that is a uh, corking question. 
Uh, thank you, David Jukes. If you want to email in some questions and suggestions, have a word pod at gmail.com. See you after the break. You know there's a disturbance in the force when it's me doing an ad read because I don't do this shit normally. But Manscaped have dropped a new ad. It's important. We love these guys. They've supported us, so support them. This ultimate package includes the amazing Lawnmower 4.0. Manscaped, the leaders in male grooming, have done it again. Two million men worldwide that trust Manscaped with the new Performance Package 4.0. By going to manscaped.com, use the code WORD20 for 20% off and free shipping. That's specific to the lids, to this podcast. Inside this package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. First off, the new Performance Package 4.0 includes the new lawnmower. This trimmer is insane, and I dare say the greatest ball trimmer ever. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also has this amazing LED light, so if you're a maverick and you shave your balls in the dark, you can see where you go. And as I said, the Weed Whacker is amazing. It uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system you get all of this kit within the performance package 4.0 and then seal the deal with manscapes liquid formulations their crop preserver ball deodorant for before leaving the house and the crop reviver ball toner manscapes even throw in two free gifts with every performance package 4.0 get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code word 20 treat yourself go around the house see what else you can shave but shave everything carl can you shave pets don't shave you pets' balls. Just use it on yourself. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com using the code WORD20. Aye? Next time we hire someone oh in God. their job description, I want it written. I'm not making my own tea forever. Right. We are the talent. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to the man who cleans up after you. <laughs> <laughs> so I am on your side. I would like... I thought that's what Finn was. And he's all like, oh, I'm fucking busy, isn't it? Adam asked you me to make he... him a cup of tea after having a sleep and sitting on his phone. I didn't sit on my phone. Check I my haven't... Instagram. Oh, so you sit on a chair on your phone? It's my job to make sure I'm rested enough to be able to be funny. All right. Lovey. Rosie Holtz here. Took a picture of him having a nap. At Dan has a podcast on Instagram. It was weird. His eye, the eye thing is real. <laughs> Hi, bro. <laughs> sleep like this. <laughs> what? I sleep with my left eye open. Do, yeah. What, What? like a, a psychopath? What do you mean? A psychopath? <laughs> Isn't that what No, I Rosie, like a lad who grew up in Dovecot in the mid to late 90s. <laughs> Gets stabbed having a fucking nap, lad. Someone's after me pogo stick. <laughs> Sleep with one eye open. Um, yeah, well, I had an operation when I was a kid, took a muscle out of my leg, put in my eyelid to help it balance a bit. You know, well, a bit so weird. one, what one's always open? So I sleep like this. <laughs> okay, okay. What is sexy? <laughs> Everything about you so sexy. Yeah, he's and watched, I'm a gonna go. He's watched me once. Yeah, we've, oh, bonking. We've, yeah, we've said. Yeah, yeah, we've said. But Rosie doesn't know, does she? What do First I time know? Carl had a thingy with his girl, his now long term girlfriend. Rubik's oh. cube. We playing Rubik's cubes. <laughs> what's this? What, Rubik's yeah, cubes. Yeah, what's the thingy? Fingering. No. That's what he was doing? Right. Right. It was. What like that? It, it wasn't both hands. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really unusual <laughs> technique. <laughs> the anemone. I was just tickling. Him. I was in the bed with them. It was. With they doing this? Yeah. All of you? No, I was no. asleep. <laughs> okay. But his girlfriend thought I was watching. Because he was like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bit weird ever thinking that, because you were watching, but... I wasn't watching. He was listening. With my eyes. <laughs> but you had a fucking pretty intense dream. <laughs> uh, Rosie, thank you. Welcome thank you. to the show. If you expected better, you shouldn't have. Okay. So, Rosie. Yes. You're one of the most uh, well-spoken people <laughs> that I know. In the world. And in the first... Why did you say that sentence worse than you say most sentences? You speak good. Word sound go from your mouth. Good. Very staccato. It's the pressure. What I want to know is, in your family home, yeah. is your washing machine in the kitchen or a utility room? It's in the utility room. Oh, darling. 
Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Runcorn. <laughs> the first visit from someone of your class. I have never been to Runcorn. No, before. I know. <laughs> You've never summered great. in Runcorn, Rosie. Oh, no. My goodness. It's been me. on my list for a while. I know. I, I must head to Runcorn. Florence, Milan at winter in winter and Runcorn now. Um, it's Where are you from? Uh, Somerset. Okay. So my parents live in Bath or yeah. Bath. Bath, yeah. Bath. No, yeah, well, no. It's not hard, is there? Yeah, but it, until you're doing a gig in Bath and you're from the north and you keep referencing Bath. Yeah, they weren't And like then that. someone goes, it's fucking Bath, isn't it? Fucking <laughs> Bath. 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 How, so what about the local sort of Somersetians? That's not the right one, is it? How, what's a, what's the collective noun for a Somerset person? A, summer, uh, a Somerset. A Somerset. A Somersetian. Some cunts. Uh, the summer. The some cunts. Some cunts. Right. Yeah, it's the some cunts. But if you're from yeah. Yeovil, how do you say it? Because there's a what, lot of yogis. How do you say bath? Or yeah. Bath. Right. Bath. It really is. So a it is, it's bath. It's a class thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It is. <laughs> is it? It is. Bath. Are you from fucking bath? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe it is. It's one of the nicest places in that the UK. It's a really <laughs> nice place. Yeah. It's no run corn, but it's. it's uh, Do you live in great. London now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I particularly like Bath's one of those. Bath is one of those places where you know somewhere's nice when you gig and like you doing like there's loads of gigs that I do. Where you just drive in, do the gig, great gig, and then you fuck off home straight away. And then you know you're in a nice place when you're inviting your partner. When it's one of those ones where you're like, do you want to come with me to this place? Like I've, you know, like yeah. Bath's one of those ones. See, I don't do the way around. I take my partners to the worst bits so that they don't want to come with me. Right, so that, straight away. So then I get weekends away on my own. Right. What, what do you do though if they really like it? If they're like, oh yeah, I love the grime. Do you have to keep taking them along? Um, that hasn't happened yet because, yeah. you know, I'm talking Coventry. <laughs> Every <laughs> time we shit on Coventry, <laughs> Hull and Stockton on Tees so much. I like Stockton. Feels a bit rough. But... For a romantic weekend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take her up the Teesside. Take her up the Teesside. Love it. I don't even know where Stockton is. Where is Stockton? It's like Middlesbrough's really ill little brother. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is though, isn't it? Middlesbrough, I'm still here. Well, like the first few times I went, so there's a great theatre there called The Ark. And there's a comedy club in there once a month, and it's amazing. And the first few times I went, I literally just turned up, walked in The Ark, and you're just in this unbelievable theatre art centre that's packed for comedy. I, I One of the Stockton, best gigs in the North. I genuinely thought Stockton was like a really lovely upper... Last place for the first few times I went. Got a bit of an edge to it, hasn't it? Yeah. God I only bless had it. one walk around and then that was the end of that illusion. Well, you've got so many places. Now you've done Have a Word, it'll open up so many avenues. If you're going to do live work and you want to tour it, you know, now because you've been on here, you can play some fucking romantic weekend getaways. So there's better places than Runcorn. Runcorn. Real. Stockton. Stockton. Real. 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 It's a lovely place, isn't it, for the weekend away? Oh, yeah. You'll sell some tickets in Preston now, kid. Don't worry. Yes. St. That's, Helens. That's all I want. St. Helens. <laughs> You've had quite a good pandemic, really, haven't you, Rosie? Yeah, but but like on well, like online. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. So you started just for our listeners and, and viewers who don't know sort of of your work. Yes, I'm sure they'll go and find it not too long after this. Um you started doing a a, a repeated character essentially of uh a woman who has got quite sort of right-wing opinions yeah, uh, in a very sarcastic manner. And a lot of people just think you're a real person. Yeah, they get so angry. Yeah? It's terrible, yeah. So, yeah, she's just she's just a basically an extreme Tory. Yeah. Um, and rants at the camera. But she's also a bit thick. She's a bit stupid at times, isn't she? Yeah. Well, like, she, just, she just contradicts herself the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but there's people who are genuinely left-wing who are like, this woman's a fucking it, horrible idiot. And then there's people on the right as well who are like, good good for her putting these uh, videos out. I actually know, I haven't had it. It's only the left who get angry with me. The right get angry with me because they realise it's the joke. The only time I've had people on the... I did a, a thing about a woman who'd gone to um, a supermarket without a mask and that everyone went mad. They were so angry. And I thought it was obviously a joke because I was like, oh, I've gone into Sainsbury's and 
I had to, uh, someone ran up and they put a bell around my neck to warn people in the frozen food aisle I was coming and, and they were starting to shout, burn the witch, burn the witch. So I thought it was like, obviously a parody, but everyone got very upset <laughs> and were like, this woman is a disgrace. And, um, and then I had some really sweet messages from some anti-maskers who were like, we have your back. <laughs> You're so brave. And you have to message back, I don't want you to have my back. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off from my back. I've, I've thought for a while, like, what would you do? What would you do if, like, for example, Piers Morgan quote tweeted a video from this podcast saying, like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen? Yeah. Like, like you know, when you get support from the people. Yeah, if we become Pretty Patel's favourite podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be a surprise, <laughs> bit of a surprise. The unwanted retweet, is that what you'd call it? Yeah, the unwanted backing. They're, they're putting their, sla like Nigel Farage going, they've got some good points on this podcast. Yeah, he's got a out. lot of followers, but do you want any of them? Mm. Mm. Are they yeah, going to sign up to Patreon? Yeah. But then you're playing with that line all the time, aren't yeah. you? Like, yeah. But it's the, it's, um, yeah, no, it's mainly people on the left who give me grief. Or people who think, who get that I'm joking, but think my jokes are evil. Evil jokes. Well, just, they're just like, you shouldn't joke about this. And you go, well, are they, are they like, you're, you're not a refugee, you can't joke about refugees. Oh my God, I feel so, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, literally, uh, where have you been? We should have had joined you on earlier. <laughs> that feeling that you've got, I definitely feel like that's a very have a word vibe. It is, that, like, we're, it, it's, it's quite funny, we've spoke about politics maybe, just into double figures, I'd say, <laughs> at times. What do you mean? It's what are they? What? The Israel-Palestine. No, what I mean is, like, <laughs> we're, we're quite very openly left-wing and sort of, you know, on that on that side of politics. But the only people you ever piss off are left-wing people. Yeah, it's true. And also, can I say the... Mis and the racists we picked up, pissed off on YouTube, on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 What for the that was great fun, though. Yeah. That was good fun. How yeah. did you piss off the racists? What for the it was the yeah. M-word in the queue. Yeah, just highlighting that oh. someone came up to Adam after a tour show and started whinging about not being able to use the N-word. So Adam told the story, we all took the mickey, put the clip out, yeah. and guess which social media platform really got annoyed? It was Facebook. Shock <laughs> fucking horror. Oh, it was Gammon Central for Essentially a few days. After, after the tour show, so I in my last tour show, I did some material about race, which was uh, misconstrued by a member of the audience who came up to me afterwards and was like... Uh, Great that white people are doing jokes about racism now. And, you know, why can't I shout the N-word at a footballer but a black guy can sing it in a rap song? Oh, no. So, you know what <laughs> no. I mean. Now, there was a big cue, so I just, like, sort of explained to him why we were on complete opposite sides of the table and yeah. whatever. Uh, and we, like, we sort of had a laugh about this guy at his expense on this. And then we put it on <laughs> Facebook as a clip. And people were like, eh, no! No! That guy had some really good points. <laughs> One of our most all, watched clips ever. Yeah. All of our listeners found out about it and were then yeah. arguing with the racists in the comments and it was really good for the algorithm, Rosie. Really, uh, so, really well. so do you find that if a video is just funny yeah. and everyone goes, ah, oh, that's a good joke, it gets less of a... Do yeah, you almost definitely. want to, to like sort of shake the hornet's nest a bit? Sometimes, but sometimes it's really painful. I did this one a few weeks ago that made some people so angry and it was love island contestant ends up at a pretty patel refugee camp by mistake <laughs> and <laughs> people were not happy tell me you don't want to watch that video was, right now there, there was, how did that go well well the problem like people got that it was a joke but i mean lots of people were like yeah this is great and then there was this backlash for some people who were just like you're you're a racist you're, and I was like, and then I sort of wrote back going, oh, no, actually, I'm uh, taking the piss out of the home office. And this is, and they were just like, they were like, fuck you. It was just got really evil. And then a load of, a um, few comics just were like, unfollowed me and sort of shared my Kofi link and were like, instead of giving Rosie Kofi, why not give to these charities? <laughs> comics oh, did that? Yeah. Fucking oh, rats. comics. It was awful. Yeah. I'm oh. We, so we, we got in a little bit of trouble at one point and there was a lot of comics who were very defensive of us and were like, they're fucking around, this is jokes, yeah. whatever. And there's a select group of comics at the minute who, if a comedian makes a joke that they don't like, and that that the, the, that is awful. They're like woke carnivores, aren't yeah. they? Like, you're coming after your own. 
And like, I don't know. Also, like, I knew some of them. I was like, oh, come on, guys. Just one of them messaged me privately. And I thought, oh, well, at least she's reached out. And then I saw she'd been like slagging me off online and unfollowed me. So I thought, oh, okay, she hasn't. She's not really reaching out. But it was, yeah. So, she, so she slagged you off and did a little reach. Yeah, she did a reach where she was like, hi, Rosie. I think maybe. she's going to do really well in, in comedy. <laughs> she was like, maybe you don't realise that your, your video is quite insensitive and you might want to take it down. And oh, I thought, oh, well, she's reached out. And My favourite like, oh, no, She's oh, also right. been saying I'm a so bigot. She a, sounds great. There's, yeah. a vid- there's a video from... Um, <laughs> Sounded like you were getting upset then. There was just a little bit of coffee, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a bit of a back and forth a couple of weeks ago yeah. via DM in the end, which I'd always preferred than a, a public one. So Dan was off with COVID and we did a, a Patreon episode of just me sat here and ca- talking to Carl. And there's a video from Greek stars in their eyes where a woman... Uh, <laughs> with, a woman was... A, an able-bodied, able-visioned white woman yeah. blacked up and pretended to be blind as Stevie Wonder. Stop it. Right? No, properly. Yeah. It, it's, it's one Not of 40 <laughs> years ago. 2012? 2012. It's, it's <laughs> phenomenal, right? It's, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And the bit where she good? gets the... Was she good? But they get a production <laughs> assistant to walk her out. <laughs> and, like, the stairs she's already walked up, they're, like, chaperoning her down. Because they're like, oh, the stairs there. She, she's surely like, I know, I walked up them. She's got her eyes open, she's just got glasses on. <laughs> I know, but once you've blacked up, you might as well go the full hog and piss off every blind person as well. Sit me down. But you, like, we, we put the clip out and the amount, like, it got hundreds and hundreds of shares straight yeah. away, including from black comics and, like, people we don't even follow. We followed the black comics who'd found it from them and then reshared it. And there was just this middle class white guy in my DMs going, I don't think you really understand how upsetting this would be <laughs> to the black community. And we were like, No, we understand that blacking up is very, very, very wrong. That's why it's funny that this was allowed yeah. to happen this century. And he was like, No, 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 you don't understand. There's not one black person in the world who found that funny. And we were like, Go and look at all the quote tweets. But every, it's every black comic in the country has gone, this is a hilarious And video. famously, what all black people want is one white well, middle-class comedian isn't it? to if talk some guy for going, them. No, look, you don't realise you're speaking down to these people. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if they know how to work Twitter, but let me speak <laughs> on behalf of the black community. Do they have Twitter? Do they have phones? Good God, shut up. It's the weird attacking your own. Like, yeah, I get I it. Like that. You, if you if it's You can call out hate speech, but comics... Like, I get it. We, you know that you're playing with the line, and we've said it before on here, but comics are meant to understand that as an industry, as a type of person, you're fucking trying to find that line. And there's also got to be a little bit of understanding when you slightly get that line wrong. If you just trip yeah. over it, like to be a but comic it, who's like... Even, rah, 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 rah. But we're not are even you talking about getting the line wrong. We're talking about Rosie making an obvious joke, playing a character, which is supposed to be a parody <laughs> of the worst people in the wonder. world. Like... We've mentioned this before. I don't know why comedy gets held to any sort of higher standard than any other form of art and entertainment. Like, if Rosie makes a parody of a Tory, then there's people going, ah, well, that's actually really a problem. But American History X, a film about racism and, like, the the murder, like, that's okay. That's not a true story. That's not a true story. Someone wrote that story and it's a film and it's hard-hitting and it's awful and it displays... And characterises like the worst human traits in the world. That's okay because it's drama. If that white middle class comic went on Twitter, and went, the thing is with Twelve Years a Slave. <laughs> speaking as a white middle class man, <laughs> all that community. This is really offensive. It's awful. What? What? Um, what are you? Because you, you don't do stand up, do you? No, I used to. You used to, and but then you, you just went off it. You got bored of it. I just didn't like. Well, also like at the time, so my uh, my boyfriend was was like a good stand up and, and that kind of put me off I was like looking at what he was doing and I thought no yeah. I remember seeing him do Mock Week and I just thought oh this looks exhausting it's just lots of people just like trying to out joke each other I yeah. thought <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Oh, it must be awful. I was like, <laughs> how up, disgusting. <laughs> no, I just thought I, I, it was exhausting. I didn't, I, I couldn't handle it. Too competitive, too yeah. itchy. I don't, yeah, I just went, I just went off it really. What about the, so that's sort of the industry and yeah. that's the way, like you see the ladder and you go, that doesn't look like a fun way to get to yeah. the top. 
what about the actual gigs? Like being on stage, you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. But I think the thing was I stopped enjoying them even when they were going well. And yeah, really it was good. when I was starting to do, when I was starting to sort of get somewhere in the industry that I was like, no, I don't, I don't like this. And then it helped that, you know, I also, I, I'm an actor. So my acting work had started to sort of do okay. So it was easier for me to go, nah. Because you had a very, very uh, critically acclaimed hit show at the Edinburgh Festival a couple of years ago, didn't you? The, the Royal One. Yeah. So what that, was that called? That was, the, I, can't, I can't even remember, the Crown Jewel. <laughs> <laughs> Pandemic's been a bastard, hasn't it? What's what, what my hit? show you were in? Ah, oh, that old thing. That ah. old thing. The Crown the Jewel. The Crown Jewel. And it was me and one other actor, and we played all the roles in The Crown. Um, like the Queen and the Prince Charles and everything. End of list. And it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Just those two. And the Corgis, obviously. So yeah. the, the videos you've been doing during lockdown, which have yeah. been very, very successful and seeing your followers go through the roof. What? Are you going to use those videos for? Or have you not thought that far ahead? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, I'm in talks with uh, sort of doing a podcast. But I mean, everyone's got podcasts. <laughs> Obviously not as good There's as this too many. one. <laughs> There's too many podcasts. But I, d- I don't know, really. I'm just sort of, um, yeah, no idea. TV producers must be looking at this. It must be a weird thing for TV producers to see so much talent sort of finding their own voice and then finding a platform and finding people that love what they do. It's weird because it's making their job easier in terms of like finding the talent to maybe produce something to make a TV show. But at the same time, it's the platform that's probably going to end TV. Yeah, because it's so instantaneous as well because you can react to something straight away and you've got no one messing with what you're doing, which is great. You haven't got a producer going, actually, why don't we put some vampires in this? Vampires are very in. Or Have let's not do that joke. That's a little too risky. Rosie, can I just that. say, I love this thing we've written in the uh, in the first half. Yeah, it's about uh, refugees, and I'm not sure. Well, you're love not Island. one. Not sure you're not that. one. So <laughs> maybe we just do about people in the north. <laughs> and that's our job. All right, that's <laughs> they're our jokes. We're thinking maybe you should actually be a refugee for like a year or two. You say that, but someone said that to me. They were like, you can't make jokes about them unless you are one. I went, but otherwise I can only make jokes about white middle class women. Yeah. Well, and now we're not yeah. that exciting. It'd be a great defense. Or oppressed. I'm from And they're very easy to upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's true. Now you can be like, I've been to Runcorn. <laughs> I, I was up here. I could do own. one of those hour Edinburgh shows about my time in Runcorn and how to I couldn't even it find was. a Pret. I was like a Actually, refugee. Actually, there is no Pret in Runcorn. Right, okay. I d- couldn't find one. You make a joke, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's isn't it? pretty bad. There's really one bad. cost there, and it's is in there? Runcorn Shopping City. Oh, oh. And Runcorn Shopping City. Um, have you ever been to Basra? What is what's that? Bajra, what is Bajra? <laughs> Have you seen the Hills of Eyes? No, but I, I read the <laughs> Wikipedia entry. <laughs> <laughs> so you Why? know what I'm talking about? Then. Because I really like reading Wikipedia entries of horror films. Wow. <laughs> and we were just going to slag off Runcorn a bit, but I really feel like that's opened up a... Don't right. watch them. You don't watch them. No, the ho- I sometimes watch them, right. but if I, you can't watch them all, can you? So then you've got to... <laughs> Not <laughs> too many. No. <laughs> so I just spent days. You've got to, you've got to read up on them. Do you get scared? Um, sometimes. You get scared Some... reading Wikipedia. <laughs> no, of course not. No, <laughs> but sometimes it's very useful because they literally have descriptions for all of them. Are you on Wikipedia for <laughs> other stuff, or is it just horror films that you've got in this really narrow lane <laughs> of like? It's pretty much just horror films. Wow. Yeah, like there's a Lindsay Lohan film where. There's, she has this twin and... The parent trap. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a horror film. Was, Are you a child of divorce? <laughs> <laughs> no! Stay together! It gets so bad for the children! No, this one, one of them's a stripper. Like one of the Lindsay Lohan's. <laughs> and Is they've been sequel? targeted by a murderer. <laughs> He cuts off one of their arms, and then because they're twins, the other arm disappears as well. It's really... Just to recap, though, you haven't seen this film. You've just read about it on Wikipedia. I've just read about it on Wikipedia. <laughs> so, uh, it's really good. I recommend it. I know who killed me. Yes, I know who killed me. It's really great, apparently. Well, when no, you watch it's it. Not Im- right. <laughs> yeah. What horror films have you seen? 
Um, so I like I like the eighties ones because they're a lot more like gory and messy, like Evil Dead. Yeah, evil. You know, she gets raped by a tree, which is quite exciting. Not in a good way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Evil Dead Reanimator, where she gets assaulted by a head. I mean, the eighties. They're quite. <laughs> Looking out. weird. <laughs> Got a finger by a toaster. <laughs> really bad. It is a common theme of 80s horror movies. Is it? Yeah. What, household appliances sexually assaulted yeah, people? always household appliances. <laughs> Forks, I, I, the little spoons, everything. You watch Beauty and the Beast recently. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I'm just thinking you're getting confused. I'm, I'm scared of horror films, you know. Have I told you that? I don't like them. Adam, we did a ghost hunt together. You lasted a minute and 20 seconds of seven minutes. I, I, I can believe. Went and hid in the bathroom because my dad wouldn't turn Michael Jackson's thriller video off. No, that used to really scare me as well. It's a sc- it was a scary. It's, scary. it's really yeah. scary. The start of it, when, he's ch- when, he's, when she's running away from him, oh, you don't like the dance moves. <laughs> Or the bit that's clearly choreographed dance that isn't scary. Dun dun, dun dun. That's yeah. not that's not the scary bit. Don't the, like her. The, am I wrong? Am I wrong? The start of Thriller, where he turns into a werewolf. Yeah, it's really scary. And the eyes. That's the scary. Have you bit. seen it, or have you just oh, Wikipedia? No, I've seen it. <laughs> Adam's like, honestly, the choreography was shocking. <laughs> Third zombie from the left at the back. So out of time. <laughs> Awful. Dun, dun. Have you ever seen a horror film? Have you ever watched one? Um, What's the scariest one you've seen? <gasps> Have you seen House of Wax with Paris Hilton? No. Is it good? <laughs> it's, 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 it's not good, but it's got some very upsetting set pieces in it. Like this guy, I'm just going to tell it. This guy gets encased in wax but he's still alive and then they find him and, and this guy's like, oh my God, man, what's wrong? And he can't speak. So he's like, don't worry, man, I'm going to get you out. So he starts trying to like dig him out of the wax. What's wrong? But then he like... <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> Covered in wax, dickhead. <laughs> what's, what's happened there? <laughs> Legitimate question. But he starts trying to get him out and pulling off chunks of his face because it's like the wax is oh. awful. Oh, really God. upsetting. <laughs> right. <laughs> you ever seen mirrors? Mirrors? No. You ever seen mirrors? What's that no. one? No one ever seen mirrors. When you look in a mirror, like you see you, but like it's a bad version of you and it can kill you. <sighs> like obviously it's, it's scary because you got mirrors in your house. Yeah. 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 What's I don't know House of Waxed with Paris Hilton though, is it? No. That, are you on the PR team for this <laughs> film? <laughs> what was the I one where she gets locked in the underground? Back. She gets- Oh, creep. Creep. That's good. That was pretty scary. But that, that got me. That is taken off from this 70s film about this cannibal who lives in the underground who only knows how to say, mind, mind the doors. And he just chases after screaming women going, mind the doors. And it's, <laughs> it's Is great. that for real? <laughs> I can see why in the 2002 version, <laughs> they edited that bit out. <laughs> right, like some weird Mighty Boosh character. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. Hey, take it, yeah, that's not scary. That's just helpful, isn't it? <laughs> mind the doors. <laughs> <laughs> they say that on the tram in Blackpool. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Um, creeps, who won? I scared the yeah, shit out of my girlfriend one. to that. I creeped outside while she was watching. She went, I watched yeah, Hostel when I was a banged kid. Banged on the window. And she oh, that's not nice. It. I don't yeah. like those ones. They're, they're just a bit torture just, porny. Yeah. 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 I, when I was a kid, I, I told my mum and my dad, I was like, I want to get into horror films. And, <laughs> and so, like, there's watch Hostel. Yeah. Me, I, I, t- I think Hostel had just come out and people in school were maybe talking about it. So I said to them, I want to get into horror films and I want to watch Hostel. So my mum made me dad watch Hostel with me. Like it was like a father and son bonding thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I remember watching it. What yeah. Happened? Yeah. And like, then I don't really remember. I don't think I've watched a horror film since. Do you think it's because you, I thought you were going to say you didn't remember the film because you oh, like blacked yeah. out because of trauma. How old were you, Adam? <laughs> like 12, 13, I think. Right, okay. No. Not like five. Yeah, but like my little brother and that, they watch like the, the Annabelle ones and all that. And I'm like, fuck that, mate. So what's the point? I thought, what's, why are we watching something to be scared? To feel alive, innit? Yeah, it's to feel, feel alive. New, I already feel alive. Like you're just going to sleep. But those, those, <laughs> you're, he's fuming about that nap <laughs> you've just had. <laughs> Carl's fucking fuming about that nap. <laughs> what? Fuck off. Um, the, there's ones that are just like, are they called slashers? Yeah. No, but they're, isn't that 
Hostel is one of those where there's not a load of suspense and fear. It's more no, just, it's just like gratuitous, showing the horrible stuff. I get scared watching like thrillers as well. I remember what I have to do if I <laughs> this is true as well. If I watch a film that scares me, I have to then go and watch something else with the same lead actor in. To sort of prove to myself, <laughs> well, that he's still alive. That no, that he's not. That that, that that's not real. Yeah. So like, I'm pretty sh- the the Mothman prophecies. I'm pretty sure it's Harrison Ford. Right. So I I had to put Indiana Jones on for a bit after that. Because <laughs> I was like, I'd sort of believe him. I want to hit the bullshit no, I, bell, no, no, but t- I think t- it is. I'm, t- I'm telling the truth. Oh, I put, I, a, I put a cartoon on me. I put, like, The Simpsons on. Yeah, but there's no... Homer Simpson's not in the Mothman he's prophecy. Not so no, he isn't. No, he's not. Me, no, he's not. Down. Can you check that on Wikipedia? <laughs> he's hum- Yeah, uh, he's not. No. He wasn't. It's the uh, House no. of Wax with Paris Hilton. You can have some <laughs> Just watch yeah. One Night in Paris. Just One Night in Paris, yeah. <laughs> I am... Um, that's the one I've watched, The Mothman Prophecies. That's a horror film, isn't what it? What is that one? So, <laughs> right, Harrison Ford's character, and it's based on a true story. I didn't story. know he was in a horror film. Is it a horror film? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Adam's recollection of films, not great. <laughs> so if this ends up like, right, Harrison Ford is a golfer, <laughs> right? And he's he needs money for his nana. And he can hit a ball really hard. And there's a moth. And they go on tour, something like that. It's Richard Gere. <laughs> it's Richard Gere. There you go. <laughs> just, to, just to prove the point. <laughs> so you watched Indiana Jones? I watched Indiana yeah, yeah. Jones. I watched the Mothman Prophecy. And then watched Indiana Jones for no reason. <laughs> Should watch Pretty Woman. <laughs> I watched something. <laughs> when, did, when did the Mothman prophecies come out? 1998. So uh, it's terrifying. It came out in uh, 2002. 2002. 2002. So here's what happens. Right? <laughs> Ten year old Adam had weird taste in films. <laughs> There's this like demon called the Mothman. Um, and basically, so Richard Gere's driving down the street or whatever. He's on like the west coast. <laughs> Does he look like a moth? Is he no, like a giant no, moth? He's demon? normal. He's normal. <laughs> okay. So he's driving down like the west coast of America, <laughs> right? And then he runs out of petrol or something. <laughs> I still can't believe you watched him down the <laughs> That's phenomenal. If this turns into Dude, Where's My Car? <laughs> I'm not shocked. <laughs> so he knocks at a house and a fella answers it with a shotgun and he's like, Yeah, I love. He's back again, but he's like, I've never fucking been in in my life. But it turns out he's been there like every night for the past like month. This fella knocks every night on this house and it's like, oh, I need help with my car. So this couple are like, it's that fucking. He doesn't remember. Yeah, he doesn't remember. And is it 41st Dead Squam? Keep going. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) So basically, the Mothman is like this big mothing and it's killing people. So, like, when you're driving down the street at night, there's like two red lights in the sky. And this is why it's so scary, because those two red lights are like the Mothman's eyes, and it'll like come through your car, make you crash and kill you. But you know, like when you're driving at night and you see like a crane with two red lights on, I always think like, what if that's him? Wait, sorry, this this film sounds lame. So he's driving along and there's a big bug that, that makes you crash. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. But, but he doesn't crash. He goes... He, he goes and knocks on this house. Why didn't and someone the fella just, whose door he knocks on is in Armageddon. Why didn't... <laughs> is he Bruce Willis? <laughs> Should have watched that instead. Yeah. Why don't they just turn the big light on? <laughs> End of moth problem, innit? <laughs> it's really scary. It sounds horrendously horrible. I bet that's the, the light at the ending. They get out a big light. Yeah. yeah. But it's... it's Draw it's, the moth it's, out. It's, it's a true a story. fucking lamp. It's, true story. it's not a true no, it story. No, it fucking isn't. It's, Check it. It. it's a true story. It's a true story. It's a sto- true story. It's a true story that he's told, not that happened in real life. Today's episode Based is on a true life story. Is so you're saying moths kill people? 2002 film. The Mothman. The big demon Mothman. The Mothman prophecies. Yeah. People think the Bible's a true story. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but it wasn't written in 2002, was it? And, <laughs> and the Bible didn't start Richard Gere or Harrison Ford. <laughs> Adam, how's the Bible? Fucking great, right? Fucking great. Drew Barrymore, can't remember fucking anything. Jesus likes her. Golf tournament, loads of films. Have you ever done any, have you ever done any uh, horror? You're into horror and you've done acting. Yeah. Have you been? <laughs> it's not ready yet. Adam's cooked. No, uh. I've not done any <coughs> horror. I'd love to do a horror. I've just done, like, shitty adverts, really. What adverts have you done? I did. I've done an advert. I did a... Uh, For the Mothman Prophecy. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just saw it. <laughs> I did a uh, Poundland Christmas advert. 
Sure. And, uh, the, have you ever been yeah. in a poundland? Yeah, I have been in a poundland. <laughs> that was such reverse snobbery there. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't don't judge. I <laughs> just want scum rolls for scum people, okay? And when someone is this well spoken, I, I was like, no. That should have gone to a, a working class person. Yeah, you've got to afford living in London though, haven't you? That's where Poundland helps out. Yeah. Uh, um, this is, um, any other adverts we I, can... Uh, what, what else have I done? Uh, the Love Island, like the little bits before Love Island, the kind of indents, the Just oh, yeah. Eat ones. It's one of them. Oh, yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Caroline Flack. No. Oh. Yeah. And, Hashtag gone too soon. But other, otherwise, otherwise, I can't think of... Any, I mean, just a few shitty adverts. I once went for a Doritos advert and I really fucked up the audition for everyone because it was like, <laughs> we, it was like we had to go in as like a group of friends and there was this woman and she said, "Okay, what I want you to do is, is you're all around a table and you're all enjoying your uh, your Doritos, <laughs> and um, and you're talking about your lives, but all the while eating your Doritos, <laughs> and then like suddenly, girls do, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> girls do." She went, and then suddenly, ding, 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 a mariachi. Is it mariachi or is it mariachi? Mariachi. mariachi? mariachi bag comes in and they start playing Michael Jackson's Beat It. This is before like Michael oh, Jackson's announce uh, thing. And um, <laughs> why? It's just a joke. Oh, right. so- <laughs> You know, because the thriller one's scary. No, I thought you were, I thought you were genuinely scared to beat it. Fall back There's a it. knife fight. <laughs> Honestly, we joke about it. And um, yeah, and she was like, she was like, so you all start reacting to the band. You're like, oh, some of you are like, oh, what's going on? And then some of you start like dancing around all the while enjoying your Dorito. <laughs> so, um, so, she's, so she's like, okay. So, you know, she said, ready. So we're all what's there going. going on? Yeah, we're all there like eating our Doritos. I don't know what's happening here. When I'm out with the girls, just catching up, we don't drink Prosecco, we, <laughs> we eat, Doritos, eat Doritos, and then five Mexican men break in <laughs> and play play music to us. Do, 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 hey! Uh, do, do, do. That Love was it. the basis of the advert. But she started doing it, she said, okay, we're gonna do it. So she, she sets the camera and then we're all there going, oh, how was your weekend? Oh, on these Doritos, great. And then suddenly she goes, ding, 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 ding. So I thought that meant that like the the, the marriage you had to come in. So I was like, oh, what, what? Who are these guys? What's going on? And everyone's like looking at me, going like this, and I'm going, oh, 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 oh I like it. And then like after about two minutes, the music cut in, and we were supposed to wait for the beat it music. So I've been there like miming to <laughs> Michael Jackson beat it. Oh, it didn't, what's, didn't this? <laughs> what's this? No, what's this? I once went for an advert. I went for um, an advert for Tesco. So you know when they they did like a Tesco had this advertising campaign of, for cooking. So it was like Dan's at Carbonara. Seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So there was Jimmy's steak for two. Yeah. Right. And it was supposed to be Father's Day, and Jimmy was making him and his dad a steak each. You were Jimmy. I was up for Jimmy. Right. And I got down to like the final three for it. You pull this up. This is a real thing. So, Jimmy's steak for two. I was down to, like, the final three for this advert. And it was something like 80 grand because it was, like, a three-year, like, oh, license, oh, right? so oh. nice. Yeah, look, see, him. him so, there. he's got 80 grand, that guy. Yeah, right? Go on, Imogen. <laughs> at, at least. There he is. Right, see that one there? Right, can you make that nice and big? Just so that these know what I'm talking Wait, about. Wait, it's getting smaller. It doesn't work. It's <laughs> on the computer. <laughs> Right. Imagine it's big. Right. Carl's up in Look at his face. Make though. it big, Rosie. It's him. getting smaller. <laughs> Can you see his face? Right. So to this day, that was about five or six years ago. So it was like eighty grand for three years. It's obviously been extended because to this day, you know the Tesco in Daysbury near yeah. us, our Tesco. Yeah. That is still as you walk in. Now look at that little smarmy cunt's face. And I swear to God, every time I walk in that Tesco, I feel like he's looking at me going. <laughs> Yeah, he's taunting you. I got the advert. Look at his face. He's How, looking at me. However, though, if you'd have got that, yeah. you'd, you'd be looking at yourself every time you go to Tesco. Yeah. You from two years ago, not, you know. You'd be going to yeah. Waitrose or 80 grand. Right. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I wouldn't be in Tesco anymore, mate. Tesco. Yeah. Yeah. That's really sad. Yeah. I'm really sorry. And I also nearly got a Bellboy advert for Now TV. Yeah. That was a lot of money as well. Didn't get that one. Yeah, they, some of them are so... The money is so good for some of them. Yeah, it's a 
insane. Yeah. yeah, and then he got the fucking Halifax advert where he got to do stand- nationwide, nationwide, or NatWest. It was one of them. I can't where, remember. Where he got to do stand up oh, yeah, on of TV you did. as an yeah. advert. Was that? But did it mean you could never use that material again, or did you just use <laughs> your shit? Your shit, was it? mate, Rosie. <laughs> let me speak for Adam. He won't close in on those bits. That's all I'm saying. Gold. He's not lost the closers. <laughs> I, uh, I wrote those jokes for the advert. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you get good money for it? Can you talk about, was it good money? 32. 30, that's so nice. Yeah. I just paid off all my debts. I had yeah. a lot of debts. Yeah. That's what I want. I just Mainly big, fines. I just <laughs> <laughs> yep. Paid off all my I just want a fine. big advert to like, just yeah. get rid of all my debts. Well, I became so the nice. nationwide guy for a bit. So I was turning up at like Hot Water Comedy Club, where I do every week. And I'd see people go, it's a lot of finish from my I'm not! I'm just Adam! Right. I, 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 <laughs> 32, you can deal with that though, can't you? I'm just Adam with no parking tickets anymore. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like being the nationwide guy. No. And then, I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but fuck it. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, I put a stand up clip out, which was essentially, ah, it's only going to kill old people, fuck it. Oh uh, no, oh no. And they got in touch with my agent and were like, tell them to take that down now off the internet. And I went, What, no. Nationwide did? Yeah. And I went, no, I'm not taking that down. And my agent was like, no, you've got to, because otherwise they're going to sue you for the money. And I was like, no, they can't. I can't give them the legal precedence of telling me what I can and can't joke about. Yeah. Like, if I take that down, then they've got precedent to tell me to take anything down. So no. Um, and the, I don't know what happened. There was a back and forth with them and my agent for ages. I didn't take the video down. Now, you, there's no evidence anywhere on the internet that I ever did that advert. But everyone else who did that advert, you can still find their stuff. Wow. Yeah. That worked out pretty well. Yeah. Is Nationwide telling them all what to do? Like, how long... I just don't, I don't think any of the other comics uh, did a genocide bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they just escaped. I think every good comic should have a genocide <laughs> bit. Especially when it comes to old people. Yeah, yeah. The, the elderly genocide. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think uh, Sunil Patel... Had an uh, elderly genocide, <laughs> so I think he got away with it. Um, that feels like a point for a break from an advertiser. Hey, come on, guys. Go Money cunt. Yes. What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to supremecbd.uk, one of the official sponsors of the Have A Weird podcast, and get yourself some premium CBD oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself. This stuff has got a million uses. It can help with anxiety. It can help you sleep. It can help with aches and pains. It's really, really brilliant. It's been helping me and a lot of other people. Now, if you go to supremecbd.uk and use the special promo code, code word that's w-o-r-d you get 30 percent off every and you order and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way that's how sponsorship works they sponsor the podcast we push you their way it's a money game baby but you're gonna get money off your cbd and what's better than money off nothing go get it supreme cbd dot uk <laughs> you can't tell me I, richard gear please tell me you did watch indiana jones after watching i can't Monster. remember <laughs> you didn't watch pretty woman did you Still laughing about that. <laughs> Richard Gere does look similar to Harrison Ford. Yeah. Not really. White American dad, sort of. Yeah. Handsome bastards. Mm, I think uh, Harrison Ford's a bit more sort of... Rugged. Yeah. yeah. Richard Gere's a little bit more, not feminine, but... A bit smooth. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth, smooth operator. Smooth love, love Harrison Ford. Richard Gere. Thank you. <laughs> smooth gear change. This yeah. is from a lady called Aoife. In Ireland. Now, I... It's Evie, isn't it? Is it? No, no that's right. Aoife? It is it A-O-I-F-E? A-O-I-F-E. Aoife? I know someone who, said, who pronounces that Evie. Well, she's doing it wrong. <laughs> she's got her own name Jane. right. It sounds, <laughs> sounds more right than Aoife. Yeah. What did you say it was? Evie. Evie. You know an Aoife? I think so. Oh, what? You've got too many Aoife's in your phone? <laughs> I just know so many Aoife's. Oh, God. Hi, Ophie. There you go. I only. Uh, Aoife in Ireland says, <laughs> Hi, anus and dickhead. My question for you is, have I been too much of a slut to get a boyfriend? What? I'm 23, a lady uh, from Ireland. I lost my virginity at 17 and I've been hard at work since. I've only ever had two boyfriends, nothing lasting over six months, commitment issues, 
and then was heading to uni. I've slept with around 20 different lads, mostly one night. We didn't ask her for this information. <laughs> she has literally given us stats. One lasted about 20 minutes. One was like two hours. God, he had a big lad. Um, <laughs> hello there, father. <laughs> I've slept. I really had to not do it as Tom from Father Ted. Hello there, father. Hello, Anderson Dickhead. My question for you is, <laughs> I lost my virginity at 17 now. Um, uh, so uh, 20 different lads mostly one night stands and a, f a few repeat offenders god bless them I feel that lads will be put off by my sexual history and or maybe I'm not built for relationships because I'm not great with the pressure that come along with it help a girl out from Aoife I don't mind if you say it because you'll probably pronounce it wrong oh <laughs> I think a problem is that she's given people more information than they asked for. <laughs> I think if she's on a first date going, I've sucked off 25 men! I think that might be where she's She's literally trouble. sitting down and like, do you want to face the window or do you want to face the restaurant? <laughs> anyway, are you having starters? I have sucked 22 dicks. <laughs> Garlic bread and cheese, great choice. <laughs> I love this woman. I think I've got a problem, Dan. Could you help me? I'm oversharing. <laughs> Jesus. And my menstrual cycle. Oh, you don't want to know? Well, I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> I love Aoife. But uh, yeah, just don't. Just keep it. What do you reckon, Rosie? She's, no, she's, she's fine. She's not too slutty. Like, what does that mean? It's nothing. <laughs> Okay. Rosie, twenties fuck all. <laughs> At fifty three, had five since I got to run gone. If you can't find a prep, find a dick. <laughs> I don't think that's that many either. All right, but shagger. She's, she's, wow, but she's twenty. She's twenty one. Twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah, she's in her fucking <laughs> peak. That she's means twenty three. But, but, so, but, but then also, like most of that was lockdown, right? Yeah. So she's... It's like three and a half a year. Has she it? been breaking rules is what I want to know. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's, bit that you... <laughs> that's the bit I'm concerned about. Have you been about. fucking with a mask on? Right. Mask yeah. on, in doggy. That's the only safe way I to I never go. heard much about the Irish lockdown. <laughs> I don't know why I would. <laughs> How are the Irish lockdowns going? Um, but, they, uh, I think they're quite strict. She's, yeah, it's more strict she's 23. Us. She's 23. And she's had sex with around 20. It's yeah, six yeah. years of sex. She lost it when she was 17. Right. So it's only like she's three and a bit a yeah, year. fine. Three a year. It's like every four months. It's fine. Aoife, I think you need to yeah, fuck more men. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah. You know? What are you about it, girl? She fucks people less often than I go to the doctors about me bowels. <laughs> what a bad <laughs> that is. <laughs> but both are pretty sexy. <laughs> and like both you tell to people on the first date. <laughs> 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 I've been yeah. to doctors 20 times <laughs> about my fucking bar movements. When Adam goes on a first date, they work it out pretty quickly. <laughs> They're like, this guy's been to the toilet four times and we haven't even had pudding. So he's either a massive cokehead or he's got IBS. Yeah. So, oh, it, just do what you do, mate. But just yeah. don't tell anyone. Unless, do you know. Unless they ask and they get off on it. Some people do. Yeah. yeah. Have you. Would that put you off? If you went on a first, let's say Laura had gone, right? So Laura's gone. Where's she gone? Where's she gone? <laughs> Where's she gone? <laughs> so Laura. My wife's called Laura. And right. this has been done before. Buckle up, because these journeys can be a someone lot has of this fun. As a ta really. Someone has, has this joke has as it, a tattoo. Has everyone, has everyone been to the toilet? Have you got snacks? <laughs> right, buckle up. Yep. We're going into Adam's weird mind. So Laura's passed away from a wasting disease. Wow. <laughs> well, turns out I didn't need snacks, because this one's not as fun a journey. Laura got dysentery. Do you know, do right. you know what I know? That when my wife listens to this, which she definitely will, there'll be a part of her going, yes, lost some weight there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it was long and painful, years. She struggled. Yeah. but right? it She was a shadow of her former self, right, and eventually okay. she passed away screaming in pain. Oh, <laughs> God, Adam. Right. right. Okay, this has been... Can she go to Chessing some Wales of Adventures again? Good, yeah. I like the ones where she's married to a Nigerian <laughs> warlord. They're more fun. Where she doesn't die screaming. Okay, you want to say that? So Laura's gone. She um, she was shopping right. in the local Morrisons. Right, yeah, the beige. On the bread aisle, she <laughs> locked eyes with a man and right. they immediately fell in love. What? Is this as well as the wasting disease? No, no, no. This no, is instead of... <laughs> He's right. decided to bin that because it was uh, <laughs> unnecessarily <laughs> grim. So she is he a moved. baker? He's one of the Morrison's bakers. No. Oh right, just no, a... he's, he's just shopping, but he's in a suit and he looks good. So, <laughs> so he, he goes over to him and he goes, "Madame, we must leave at once. 
and from a new life. He's okay. Where's he from? He's from. He's been in France. <laughs> <laughs> Five years. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's been to Euro Camp but, but come back with an accent. in the Faroe Islands. Aye. So she, she's moved and, to the Faroe Islands. you can't do that accent. <laughs> no. So they've moved there and they've started a dairy and chicken farm and that's where they make the money from. And little do you know, you've been eating their eggs. Why? Right. Yeah, because um, actually, <laughs> more fill me because I've been getting my eggs delivered from the Faroe Islands. <laughs> And a lot of people said, Dan, it's really not worth the shipping. There will be local farms that are selling eggs much cheaper. But I'm like, nah, I need my eggs to have come over on a ferry. Yeah. So anyway, Laura's gone. Yeah. And you go on a first date. And yeah. you start talking about, like, your promiscuous history. You're talking about sexy times. What have you done? What you're into? Sin. And you've just had a flaps. few drinks. And this is sort of niggling away in the back of your head. And you're just like... What is it? It's God. It's just the yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just say to her, you go listen. Two hmm? hundred. How many people have you noshed <laughs> off? How many have you slept with? Oh, you want both? You want <laughs> sucked down? Not just one. How many partners you've had? You want? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, and she says twenty. How would you feel about that? Depends how old she is, though, isn't it? Also, if she's yeah. sixteen, she's eighty-five. <laughs> yeah. yeah, slow. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it really, and it, it, you know, without the question, it's important how old she is. I don't know if you've heard about modern laws. <laughs> 20, well, that's fuck all, you're 14. <laughs> um, I would never ask the question because I genuinely don't care. Don't care. Yeah. Don't care or don't want to know. Don't both. <laughs> I don't want to know. I've is there a number that it I've been with be Laura seven years. I have never. I've never, you know? I've never asked a boyfriend that. You know I wouldn't want to know. Do you not want to know? No. Is there a number where it would become a problem? Mm. 999. <laughs> no, but like 112. Is that bad? 112. It's a good innings. Yeah, it's a... Yeah. I don't know. If, I just don't think I'd want to know that. Because then you'd be thinking, how, wh how, when, how? Does it change what? anything? Like, do you think any less of it? I think if you're a bit of a douchebag, it does. Yeah, I don't think you'd make, think any less of it. That's what I mean. So why do you care? Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, it, was it 112 at once? Because then... <laughs> That's impressive. Then. I might be a little put off. <laughs> How many people you start with? 112. Don't worry. It was all in one day. <laughs> and I got 32 grand. Do you reckon there's a world from <laughs> Nationwide? <laughs> but Same luckily... Day, day. Do you reckon there's a world record? Of bones in a day. A person who's had no I don't think they put that in the Guinness Book, though, would they? No, I don't sure. think they have an adjudicator there going, hang yeah. on, one, two, three, yeah, 112. <laughs> <laughs> Finn's going to Google it. They keep trying to like, get it in the book, and they're like, oh, we don't it, want it. It's the biggest gangbang record will come up. and it, it No, because that's not, because you're not having sex with all of them, are you? In a gangbang? Mm, yes, aren't you? No. I don't know, but it, I find the, the, the most... Do you want a sex marathon? in 12 hours. Jesus Christ. What? Hang what? on, each sex wins course lasts 40, 45, I'm guessing that's minutes. No, it's, no, Obviously, Carl. That doesn't add up, does No, Carl, <laughs> no. Carl absolutely so, nailed no. that. She's sleeping with 76.5 men an hour. It's like you eating what's it? <laughs> so 1.2 men a minute. Right, so on one of the upcoming patron exclusives, uh, Rosie, we're going to be trying to break world records. Oh, 45 seconds. And we've just found one for Finn. <laughs> 45 seconds, she must be good. So, <laughs> Aoife, if you just go on the internet, you'll feel way better about yourself. <laughs> Get on, go on, fine, you're absolutely fine. Do what you fuck also, if you meet someone who's like, oh, I think that's disgusting, yeah, that fuck him twat. right off. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Go on, Adam. Who controls people's past? It's ratty, isn't it? What did you do before you met me? Existed. Fuck off. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just keep fucking whoever you want, and then eventually you'll find the one. And they won't be asked because by then you might be 30 and maybe it'll be 200 then. <laughs> that was really romantic. Yeah, you really <laughs> yeah. hit the nail on the head. I think I was white on white racist when I read this because I honestly imagined somewhere like Craggy Island where everyone knows each other. <laughs> Hello, oh, Hello like, Aoife. You could also play daft and not lie. You know, if you are worried about it and it's putting people off, you could just be like, oh, it was only four. And when they're like, when they find out it's 20, I'll just go, oh, I thought you meant in the bum. Next question. 
Do that. Rosie, do you want to add anything to that bit? Because <laughs> I've got a sense that you don't. <laughs> I thought you just meant the bummer ones. Four. Oh, you meant all of them. 919 in 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really and, <laughs> and, and that's on my Patreon. Um, should we do some have a word? Yeah. It's so we're trying to help people out, solve people's yeah. lives. That wasn't a have a word. That was just yeah. someone. You that know. was like you agony aunting. Yes. This is, sort of this is people asking us to have a word with other people, or sometimes themselves. Oh, it's, nice. It's layered. <laughs> <laughs> Zorin Sahani, who I love, who is our 16-year-old Texan listener, and Ooh. she's sound. Yeah. She says, what's up, lads? Uh, I'm in a bit of a situation and was hoping you may be able to help out. So I've had two best friends since fifth grade. I don't know what that translates into for y'all. She writes y'all. So if I'm being catfished by a listener and they're from fucking Swinton, they're doing really well because they're throwing that in. What's fifth grade? Can I guess? About 14, 13. Well, year five in England's not the same though. Is it year five? Like oh yeah. 14. 10, 11. Oh, is it? Year six. Oh. So it's about... It's one ahead. We're, we're one ahead. So fifth grade is year six. So yeah, it's about year five-ish. Right, so she's had these two best friends from, from since about... <laughs> so God, how would you ever work it out? Did you hear that? You missed that, didn't you? But, I said, we're one ahead. And he went, yeah, it's just like year five-ish. <laughs> or six. <laughs> I'd say six. Comes off to five. Ten, eleven. Right, good. Two best friends since she was ten. 11. And one of them, Maddie, used to be a pretty solid atheist stroke shitty Catholic, but then she went through some crap and became a born again Protestant Christian. Unusual move there. Uh, I do not have any problem with that at all as I'm a moderately okay Muslim. Now, keep in mind that we are 16, but our whole life has been kind of started to revolve around religion and every single conversation we have has something to do with that. It's honestly becoming a bit annoying. So if I've kind of unintentionally distanced myself from her, but I feel really bad about it, am I being judgmental and wrong or should I just cut myself off from her completely? Also, if it's the second one, how? Because I'm a very non-confrontational person and I don't know how to do that at all. Thanks, keep up the good work. Um, that's cheers from Texas. Bye. So that's Zori. So her friend keeps talking about, has got obsessed with religion. Keeps talking She's now about a born again. Pro I, I don't know if anyone, that's a weird thing to do, isn't yeah, it? To be a lapsed... Catholic, and then go, do you know what? I'll try the other flavour. you religious at all, Rosie? No. No? No. I was brought up Christian. Yeah, I was brought up Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. But then my, my, um, my, my dad, that was my dad, but then he was like, he, he did, he, he gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> sounds so. Like smoking? Yeah, no. like smoking. Never again! Yeah. How old was he when he binned it? He was, he was like in his 40s, but he's so funny, because he now goes, I don't understand people who are religious. And I'm like, Dad... You were religious until you were 45. He's like, no, I don't. Why? Just wow. doesn't get it. So I yeah. could almost understand it if that was the other way around. I know, when you're young and you bonkers, feel invincible right? and you're like, I don't give a shit about all that. Like I'm 40 and I can feel myself like, I'm on the downward, I can tell. I've just- Do you think you're a few oh, years from being religious? Oh yeah, if I get to 45 and I'm like, <laughs> Maybe there should be an afterlife to make me feel yeah. better. I got a bit religious when my sats dropped when I had COVID. <laughs> really? Yeah, a little that, tiny bit, right. genuinely. Like, I genuinely think after that, and I wasn't even bad, but, like, I think, like, if I was dying, I could get a bit fucking, oh. Yeah, what would you go for? Asian. <laughs> um, what would you go? I would go... Hinduism, I think. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's Hinduism, Adam? Well, the Quakers are really nice. Yeah, they They're just sit so around easy. waiting for nothing to happen. Though. That's what they do. Yeah. I went to one Quaker service and they all just sit really quietly and then occasionally one of them gets up and goes, I um, saw a cat the other day and it made me really happy. And then they sit down again and that's... that's, that's Why were you do. at a Quaker service? When did that... <laughs> what the fuck do you do with your spare time, Rosie? You're very successful well, work-wise, um... but your spare time is horror films on Wikipedia and the occasional <laughs> Quaker Have you seen Paris Hilton's Madame Tussauds? I saw a cat and it made me thankful. Have you seen these slasher movies? Neither have I, but let me ruin that's your service. That's what I shared in the Quaker service and they didn't like that. Yeah, good times. Um, why did I go to one? I think it was when I was like, I can't remember. I think it was like for a drama project and they said, learn about religion. So I went to one. Yeah. Did you go to any other? <laughs> yeah, I went to a Jehovah's Witness one. That was quite intense. What is the deal with Jehovah's? Because we have, I think we have- Are they the ones who knock at your door? Yeah. Right, well, and we, we have some three doors down. That's all I know. They live in your street. 
I think they're allowed. I just thought he walked around forever. <laughs> what, they were like mobile? Yeah. Right. You get the bus sometimes in Liverpool, don't they? Do you remember? They used to be on the 18 a lot. Did they? Oh, you need to walk up and down the aisle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they don't celebrate Christmas, do they? I think. That's the number one. No, I don't, they don't do fun things, really. Right. I mean, the service I went to, it was all about how atheists were going to burn in hell. And yeah, we yeah. were given little drawings with um, Jehovah's Witnesses, at the avenging angels, killing all the non-believers. It was intense. I right. spoke. I spoke very to, friendly. I spoke <laughs> to them once. And my mum told me off. So what had happened was my mum was making the tea and there was a knock at the door. I was literally about 11, right? In and, and around the Mothman prophecies. Yeah. Year Good. five. Let's what? see if you fucked these memories up as well. <laughs> there was a knock on the door. And Richard Gere was there. <laughs> and he had a big moth. <laughs> Smile like that. So I opened it. And it was, there, there were two really old black people. Man and wife. Right? And they were like, uh, we're, we're here to talk about Jesus Christ. <laughs> mm-hmm. And my mum was just not asked because she's making the spag bowl. She's in the kitchen. Right? So I was like, okay. I was bored. I was watching shite on the telly. My dad was, wasn't home from work yet. So they were talking to me and he showed me this picture. And it was like a few people and then loads of animals. It wasn't a photograph. It was like Jordans. Yeah. Like tigers and bears and lions and parrots and stuff. And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> lions. It sounded the weirdest. Like, <laughs> what is it? The Wizard of Oz. Lions and tigers and bears and fucking parrots. <laughs> <laughs> But he was like, all I remember is him saying, this is how life is supposed to be. We're supposed to live as one with everything in harmony. And if you let Jesus into, if everyone lets Jesus into their life. Then you can get some parrots. <laughs> then you could you could have a tiger and a bear and that. And in then, Dovecot. Yeah. They knocked on in Dovecot. Yeah. Showed you a drawn picture with lions, tigers, yeah. bears and parrots. And, and went, then my mum interrupted us. Right. And uh, she, she literally, I think she literally told them to fuck off. <laughs> I, I love Anne like, and I've What's never going met. on here? And she, I was like, oh, this fella's talking to me about Jesus. And she was like, oh, mate, we haven't got time for this. Just fuck off. And shut the door. Oh, my God. I don't think she's had a drink yet. Do you reckon when you're a Jehovah and they're, like, handing out where you're going to do the rounds that day? does Jehovah sound like a slayer? You fucking Jehovah. <laughs> do you think... <laughs> it's the J, isn't it? It's the... Do you think there's some rounds... Pretty visceral. Do you think there's some rounds where the Jehovah goes, oh, fuck, dove cut. Like... It's well, going to be a rough one. They don't they? They think that God's on their side. Can we do a Patreon think? special where you act as Jehovah's Witnesses and knock on people's doors? Please. Isn't there something about they don't believe in blood, blood transfusions? I remember my nana it's being yeah, they don't. about that. Isn't that Jamaicans? So they... <laughs> what? That's Jamaicans, isn't Jamaican it? No, witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses don't. Well, they... that's the Jamaican thing too, isn't it? You mean the Rastafarians? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> We've, you can tell, Rosie, we do a lot of research when we're talking about different ethnicities and cultures. It's important to get these things right. Yep. Isn't that the Welsh? Didn't John Travolta? <laughs> <laughs> His son died because he was in Braveheart. <laughs> do you remember Braveheart? Didn't, this is really sad. Didn't John Travolta's son die because he didn't let him have medical yeah, care? Because of cause Scientology. Beliefs? Did, was that why he died? Yeah, because Scientology said he couldn't have this specific medicine. He just died. Yeah, because John no. Travolta's Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, isn't it? No, 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 no. Rastafarian. I don't know. That's not true, is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know he's a big Scientologist. The son died because he, uh, he denied him access to the whatever. It might have been a procedure or medication. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to. I've got I've got a few mates who are Christians, okay. and they are the soundest, nicest people, and they just keep their Christianity where it needs to be, which is just, you know, they. I, I'm kind of respectful of that. They just like to start every conversation with, "Oh, well, this is like my faith in Jesus." You're like, "Shut the fuck up!" I would rather yeah, burn 16. in hell but than yeah, deal with this. But yeah, she's 16 though, but she might just be. It's like she's discovered it. She's discovered something new, so she might calm down a bit. It just—it's just for how long is she going to go on about God all the time? Yeah, but if you're 16, you're going you're to be getting into all sorts of fun. 16's when it's about to kick off. It's when it's about God <laughs> and and death. Shine, Jesus, <laughs> shine. Trying to get laid here, dickhead. <laughs> yeah, I, she sounds like she's gone, Zareen. She sounds like she's. I think she needs to make one last effort, and she needs to speak to her and go, look. Like, we're talking about religion too much. Let's let's get a new hobby together. What should they do? Skateboarding, I don't know. Skateboarding? <laughs> Skateboarding beats God, doesn't it? Trumps yeah, just like, let's, let's find something we can both enjoy. 
isn't religion. That we I can think talk that's about really good advice. Yeah. 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 Weed. That's my advice. <laughs> weed. Fuck skateboarding. You're 16. And Let's talk oh, about weed. Can you? Also, oh, this weed's is nice. good because the Bible uh, is okay with it, isn't Finn? it? Finn? That's okay with weed. Finn's, yeah. Finn's yeah. got a bit of a problem with weed. Um, the old... What's he called? What's his name? Finley Funk Lettuce. Fin <laughs> Finley Funk Lettuce. Very funny comment on the Patreon this week when someone was like, do you know what I find Carl a mocking Finn smoking weed? Very annoying. <laughs> like, oh, you're on the line. You're on the line. Fuck off. <laughs> Me? Uh, oh, right, no, okay. not you, Finn. We love you. Shut up. Um, Finn, yeah. you can talk about weed. It's like a f hobby as well, isn't There's it? It's lots of different... It's a, it's a science when you get into it. There's so many different kinds of plants and different chemicals in it. Oh, my God. You can hear the addiction. Yeah. Love it. Mm. It's loads of fun. Don't skateboard. Yeah, if in. they both get into weed, they can have conversations like that all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's better than God. <laughs> Card tricks as well. <laughs> <laughs> Get you said the conflict. only thing that's more annoying than Christianity. <laughs> Cocaine magic. Get on that, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you about Jesus? Pick a card. <laughs> Guess what the cards are? Jesus. Yeah, but if they get into magic, there's, there's like limitless amounts of card tricks. They could learn all of them and discuss them. I find that more annoying than a Christian. <laughs> yeah. I just think, you know, something like that. Skateboard. Basically just start skateboarding all magic. Yeah. Forget about God. That's your advice. Um, another have a word? <laughs> Good. Nailing it today. Craig says, right, lids, I need you to have a word with me because I'm being a wee bitch. Totally lost track of the work-life balance thing since becoming a chef and now I'm living alone after a relationship and it's absolutely killing me. I love what I do, but on my days off, I'm so wiped out, I can't even be bothered with anyone or anything other than my wanking chariot. What? Mm, What's that? Craig. What the fuck's a wanking chariot? That's a bed. A char it's oh, his bed. Uh, oh. I don't think he should call it that. No, <laughs> but I think, Rosie, it's absolutely on point for the... Call it spaff rocket instead. Oh, oh, my God. Am I just being a wee gimp, or, or do I need to, uh, to just either take more time off or man the fuck up and deal with the tiredness? Absolutely love you guys, and like so many cunts these days, you lids have been a total lifesaver. Um, so, uh, Craig is working hard as a chef, and on his days off, can't be asked doing anything. That's quite normal for hospitality, though, isn't it? Yep. It's such a shit industry. Have you worked in hospitality? Yeah. Like, you just end up... It becomes your life. Especially if, like, it's not, like, a part-time bar thing. If he's a chef, particularly a head chef, with all, like, the days are so yeah, long. it's so exhausting. And yeah. you do feel like doing nothing but... Being in a wanking chariot, I guess, yeah. days off. I, I think like that's that fair you've enough. adopted the terminology. Yeah, I, know, I thought I'd, uh, I went on a journey. <laughs> you've changed. Yeah. Rancon's changed you <laughs> for the worse. The split shifts thing is uh, so oh, tough. When yeah. they're like, we'll obviously need you in at 10 30 till two, but don't worry, you don't need to be back in till 5 30. You're like, what the fuck am I going to do? Two till 5 30. Oh, we used to have splits with one hour in between. Like 11 yeah, to 5, what, 6 close. Yeah, that's what we used close. to do, that. It was awful. Yeah. I don't think that's, that's a split, is it? Is that not just like a big break? Uh, yeah, but they call it a split. Wow. You can yeah. go home if you want, but you won't be able to get there and back in time. So just wait here. <laughs> just literally oh. in the door. Zero oh. hours was the worst when I worked in Envy. Cause, so I worked in a nightclub and they would literally say like, your shift starts at 10. But you'd get there at 10 and if it was quiet... They wouldn't let you clock in till one. So illegal. Obviously. So you were just sat in the staff room, but you couldn't go anywhere in case it got busy. No. So you had to just be in the staff room, not getting paid until they wanted you to clock in. That is a different that, level of shitty. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. so shitty. Yeah. That was until you were like in with the managers and then you were late, weren't you? And I was Sarah, it was okay. She used to just clock in. It, it would depend on the nights of the week. Sarah could only really work the weekend, so yeah, she'd, she'd always just... Like, they'd find something for her to do. Yeah. Like, the managers had their favourites, who they'd clock in first, absolutely. But mm. if it was quiet, like, it was just going to sit upstairs. What, um, what have you done in the industry? What have you... What, in, in the um, hospitality? Oh, yeah. Um, I've done a lot of waitressing. A lot of waitressing. And I was also... I did... A, I was a bar woman at one point. And I worked at... Um, that's not hospitality. I worked at a gym... But I was uh, reception, and I was. Uh, Did you prefer bar or waitress? Because I, I we loved. I love working bars. It was loads of fun. Yeah, I think the, my I wasn't very good behind the bar, so 
I, I got all the money wrong and I gave people too much head. On the beers. Left that linger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I was fair as a waitress. <laughs> It's like a first date with Aoife. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't very good on the bars. Every time someone walked in, I just sucked their dick. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> and then I gave them the wrong change. <laughs> and that's why I was better yeah, yeah. as a waitress. Tell you what, though, we got busy pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love watching the new member of staff fuck up the pouring of a pint oh, God, for the first, like, hard, three or four shifts. Like, Becky's just started. She's only 18. She's like, <laughs> is it meant to look like ice cream? You're like, no, but I know you fucked the stock up and that's going to help me steal. You remember when Mike told me the wrong fucking glass on purpose? Uh, such a scum move, that one. Eh? So when we worked in Zellig's, worked in a bar called Zellig's. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, been a while. Been a while since it's been mentioned. This one's for you, Zellig's. Come too soon. And I, I was new on the bar. It was very competitive for shifts. So like, when I got put on the bar from being a glass collector, the bartenders who were already competing for shifts were like, we don't need another bartender. And I asked them, uh, this fellow called Mike, I was like, what glass do you put a Singapore sling in? Is it a martini glass? And he said, yeah, 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 that's the right glass. And I, I served someone a Singapore sling, which should go in a sling glass, which is like a sort of shaped like a column glass. glass. Yeah. Um, I, I served in a, a martini glass and obviously got a complaint from a customer who did it. And uh, the manager had to go at me and I managed to send around by saying Mike told me to put it in that and then Mike did get in trouble. Was that what, it was a bit he was trying like, to get me... He was trying to make me look making, shit. Yeah. Right. Is it like a bit of banter or is it just horrible? No, that's, that's dick, that isn't it? Banter's like, go and get me a bucket of steam yeah. or go and ask for a long wait. Tart and paint. Yeah, I used to get them to ask chefs for um, salmon legs. <laughs> The new, the new servers or cow eggs, either one. <laughs> right. I, felt. I mean, tartan paint is so hack, and I still fell for it when I was nineteen. Asking chefs, seventeen, paint. seventeen. I literally went to the warehouse. I did a job for a couple of months, just after I quit college and then started again. But in that few months, I did some jobs, and I went for a, a long, a long stand. Like, Can you go and get the long stand? Can you go for a long stand? And I went in. I went. I'm here for the long stand, and they they went. They didn't even laugh. They went. Cool, just wait there. <laughs> and off they went. Tw That's 25 so minutes. 25 minutes. And so I actually went back and went, they've not given it me. They were like, oh, this. I think it, w it went past being fun. They were like, this guy's so thick. It's not a funny joke anymore. They were like, sit down. It's worrying as well that I was there for 25 minutes. And they were like, don't worry, you don't need to do your job. You are <laughs> fucking useless. I convinced the host to answer the P job a PDQ machine, the car machine. I convinced there that was the phone to the manager. And I made the picture. <laughs> what? The what? The little? The, the card machine. I went, if the phone goes off and it rings more than five times, it, you have to pick that one up. That's the manager. And she picked it up. <laughs> I made a, I mean, to, uh, I said to her once. Um, God, you're so evil, but you're good with it. said, the suppliers are fucking us up with the mint. Uh, the bags are five leaves short. Can you count them three bags, please? Just count <laughs> all the mint in the bags. Counting uh, the leaves in the mint she bag. The, I promise you she counted every leaf in the mint bag. Yeah. <laughs> and your boss was like, yeah, this is good fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't learn. Don't learn what? To not be a knobhead. <laughs> if anyone wonders why Finn looks a little perturbed sometimes, <laughs> this is why Carl's teaching technique. Um, I uh, want to do one more. Are you happy? Are we podding? Are we we calling it a pod? What are we doing? One more. One more. Always one more. Why do I ask? It's always one more. Eyelids, um, can you please have a word with people who dress... Are you going to have some sandwich, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> bit hungry, babe. If, if, Go on, just have a fucking bit. I'll turn your no, mic down. Have a bit. All right, okay, good. Just fucking munching. Um, <laughs> can you please have a word with people who dress eccentrically but get pissed off when you stare at them? I'm talking about guys with long painted nails and green hair and ears stretched to look like portals into the future. My girlfriend hits me for staring when I see people dressed this way, but my argument is nobody can dress like that and not expect people to be fascinated by the spectacle they have constructed. Often, living in London, I see people who dress insanely, and I don't judge them for their lifestyle choices, but they look fucking ridiculous, and I don't think it's wrong to have a good look. Thanks, Dan Johnson. I've, I've done stand-up about this. It's on my club comic special. About, I think it's totally normal if people dress a bit weird to just be like, what? Like, I... 
<laughs> this is true. I was walking up Bold Street in Liverpool once, and there was a fellow with a mohawk. You know, like the big green spiky one? Yeah. Like, you know that one? The like a stegosaurus. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was staring at him because I was just fascinated that a man, it was like a Tuesday afternoon, was just, and he went, you're looking at my ear. And I was like hung over and went, yeah. And he was just going to air like, this doesn't mean I want people staring at me. <laughs> and I was like, it does. You didn't look in the mirror on your way out today and think you were going to fucking blend in, did you? <laughs> wow. Just because. And I'm also wearing a Barney the Dinosaur suit. <laughs> Why can't I just have some privacy? <laughs> fucking idiot. London to town, London I town, you must get enough. this. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, the, like, but, but it is also hard because you're trying not to stare because you want to be respectful of people. But if people are just a bit odd, then I'm going to. I can just see this going really wrong. I just think uh, over over to you, to you both. No, <laughs> where, where in where in London do you live? Because in Shoreditch, I would imagine yeah, Shoreditch, there's some pretty there's, fucking fun things going on. Yeah, Shoreditch, you don't know who's homeless or you know hipster Rich. really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is he homeless or does he own Shoreditch? Is he on Smack or has he got a startup? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, Team Runcorn, I think it's like it, it's braver to be the eccentric to be, to be hipster there, when yeah. you, you know. I've got more respect for lo- those guys who are like, this is what I'm into and I'm, you know, a welder's yeah, apprentice. A t- like that, that fella, if I was in Shoreditch, I probably wouldn't have even noticed the Mowork guy because there would have been three others. This yeah. is bold street. <laughs> Everyone looking at him. Look at his hair. Fucking weird. All these mohawks going, dude, do something. <laughs> I once saw a woman on a tube and she had really long fingernails. And I mean, like, that long. It was, And they just made this little clicking noises. Uh, so, oh. so that you want you want people to at least listen, don't you? <laughs> Face tattoos. Who's not looking? Well, there's a guy in Bath who's just, he's just completely covered. Right. And he's the only person in Bath I'd recognise on site. Like, so you might... You must want people yeah, to You're not mistaken of... him, are you? Is that you, John? No. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> I think the harder one is when girls are dressed extremely... Paloma Faith. Paloma Faith? When they're dressed extremely Paloma Faith? No, I mean, like, on a night out. Like, if you're gigging in Liverpool, you'll see girls that look like they've just finished the set at the strippers. And then there's that thing where you, the, the eye is drawn. And, I, you know, not being a perv, but you... Like, how are you not looking? So then you look and they're like, what the fuck are you looking at? And you're like, you, because all the boobs and bums out. I'm going to look at some dickhead in a Ralph Lauren shirt on the other side of the street. You're going to look. And then it's awkward, isn't it? You're like, you fucking piv. And then you get your camera and you're like, what? I have to take a picture. Do you know what I mean? And then you put it on the internet. What? So I'm right, though. That is completely fair enough. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think that's the awkward one where you're like, oh, God. So go back to this, though. Bye. Yeah. It's not nice, but it's just human nature. If something doesn't look like its surroundings, you look at it. You just gotta get a quick look in. He's gotta he's gotta time his looks. That's what he needs to do. Yeah, that's the grown up thing yeah. to do, to just be like, I am looking, but now I know they're looking. Yeah, then Whereas you look away. Kids are just like Like my daughter is old enough now that she basically is like, What now it shouldn't say these words, yeah. but she basically goes, What the fuck? <laughs> and you have to be like, people dress how they I think dress. that's a test, you know how kids react right do you know what I mean because kids are innocent largely do you know what I mean <laughs> so <laughs> largely so it's, apart from the murderer kids if, if, if a kid is like <laughs> what the fuck's that then then it's fair game because the kid is not being a prick the kid yeah. is being a kid yeah Etta's just got my daughter's just got to the point now where she's realising she can't just do a catchphrase thing of like say what you see because we went through a period where Quite loud, my daughter. Quite confident. She's beautiful. She's great, but she's just like fat person. <laughs> Can not can't shout yeah, that down bargains. Okay. <laughs> no, but you're like that's rude to say it. And then she was like, "But they are big. They're big. They're fat." And you're like, <laughs> "She's done it. She does it to who? Who she thinks uh, uh, is pregnant? It's like oh, baby like, in my, the tummy." My niece used to do that. It was awful. Yeah. My niece, but my niece would go to people. She'd go, "Why are you fat?" Like, what, what do you do to that? Because I overeat when I'm sad. That's what I do. I just be really real. I eat a lot because it makes me feel better when I've had a bad day. She she said it to my Laura's auntie. So she go. was just we were just in the pub. We just met up with them, and she was like, "Have a baby in your tummy." And she's like, 
58. And my, my it's just called uh, uh, Katrina. She's just brushed it off like a brooch. Right? No, love. I'm just fat. Never <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Auntie Katrina, you fucking ledge. Just made it totally not awkward. I was like, all right, nice one. Just got on with the day. I get it with kids with me eye, the innocence. Yeah. Why is your eye weird? What, what's your eye doing? Where's yeah. your eye going? Do you, yeah. do you tell them about how one of them's open when you're asleep? Yeah, I go, I sleep with one eye open. <laughs> and I watch you. Me, I can fucking see you coming. Yeah. Don't say that to kids you don't know, though, eh? I sleep with one eye open. Yeah. All right. They took a muscle out of this and they put it in here. And the kid's like, Mama, Mama like that. that. Mama, Mama like, like that. that. Like, Listen, okay, it's weird. And it's because I'm an evil doctor and I kill people. So fuck off. Mummy, <laughs> the man from the nationwide adverts, horrible. <laughs> yes, love. That's why he's not getting any more of them fucking adverts. Podcast done. Podcast done. Where, we can, where can we find you, Rosie? Uh, just on Twitter, I guess, at Rosie is a halt. What's that a play on? It's I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, Instagram? Yeah, the same. Rosie is a halt. Yeah. YouTube? Yes. I can't remember what it is. Rosie Holt? Probably. You'll find it. Thanks for coming in. No. No. MySpace. My of course, yeah, I've got a MySpace. LinkedIn. Page. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah, because I didn't realise I had a LinkedIn, but I still get every now and again you get something through, don't you? Yeah. eBay, it, uh, selling no. anything? Not, not <laughs> okay, yet. good, right, good. <laughs> not yet. Um, thanks very much. It's been an absolute Thank blast. Thank you very much for having me. When this goes out publicly, uh, there will be some uh, live show tickets available. If you go to adamrow.co.uk forward slash shows, you can book tickets for me at the Edinburgh Festival. You can book tickets for the Underbelly Festival for Have A Word. And you can also book tickets for Sunday the 15th of August. If there's any tickets left, the live show, the live Patreon thank you show in Liverpool. We've got some spare tickets. So we're selling them. More live stuff's happening now. We're, p- we're making plans to do more and more live stuff. And if you want access to those tickets early, sign up to patreon.com slash have a word pod. Do that. Pod? Yes. AdamRowe.co.uk forward slash shows where you can get tickets for me and the podcast stuff. Bye. Thanks, Rosie. Go ahead. <laughs>